All right, gamers, we are back for another game of Gallant the Diamond. This game I'm going to be playing Caitlyn Lux and two Misfortune Seraphine. Both are pretty good duos. Probably should be a lot scarier as Caitlyn Lux than Seraphine Misfortune, though. Who will mainly spike at level 6, but we've got pretty good synergy even before 6, just with the Lux roots into Caitlyn traps combo. Always scary to face no matter the level. So there's been some uh, changes to Caitlyn since my last episode of Caitlyn to Diamond. And that episode we were doing mainly crit. Or uh, no, actually we did we did entirely crit. We did not play a single crit game. But um, they've made some changes since then. Trying to incentivize crit on Caitlyn and decentivizing uh, lethality. And I think those mainly worked. I think uh, lethality is still viable. But crit I think is just a little bit better. So mainly going to be switching over to crit. Might do lethality if they're just full squishy at some point. Maybe even just to try it out. Nice one. Nice. Since we already have a pretty solid HP advantage, they don't necessarily want to trade with us, which is why I'm going to switch to just slow pushing now. Force them to have to walk up and face the prospect of a trade if they want to get lost hits. Ooh. Not quite in range to root immediately, so I won't bother trying. Alright, not bad. Gonna level net here. Need to place a trap under turret here. First we'll headshot Miss Fortune because she just walked up way too close to begin with. You can also just play some zoning traps. Keep Miss Fortune from being able to last hit there. And there was her paw thing. Uh, why is she basing? What? That is a bit of a random time to base. What does she want to start? I think she started red buff, so at least I'm not expecting to get ganked. Hmm. But awkward though, because we can definitely abuse them. Like, she was obviously running low on mana, but she's regenerating mana. Uh, yeah, I should place a ward just in case. I definitely want to stand my ground here and try and keep pushing back, because I don't want to give Misfortune a chance to base here when she's still so low. I just need to make sure I'm preserving HP at the same time, not falling low. So that I'm not- I don't become the one that also wants to look to base just because I'm running out of HP. No, they're trapping her turret. Alright, good. Close one, man. Ooh. We get the plating. Nice one. Managed to avoid a turret shot. Pop the ghost here. I'll put, place a trap on her Savannah. Actually, barely even really needed that ghost. I don't think I can quite kill Shivana, unfortunately. I, w I was almost within... Uh, like, Seraphine was almost within HP range of actually being able to do a combo on her where I could, like, flash E auto. Or flash auto E, to be fair, would be better. But she wasn't quite that low. So we're not gonna do that. Okay, we forced at least the Shivana flash. I didn't catch if Seraphine flashed, I don't think so. Alright, I'm not gonna bother with that planning. Lux can go for it just to uh, get our spell thief stacks, but personally, taking that planning would just take too long, so I'm just going to base. So yeah, running the fleet will work this game because I think it's going to be ideal. They don't have tanks, so we don't really need all that much DPS. There's always really unpredictable situations where in hindsight you could say, oh, Lethal Tempo would have won me the fight there. But, you know, it's hard to predict. 
And generally, I would say Fleet is the best option for Caitlyn. By giving her better lane dominance if you don't actually need Lethal Tempo for the game. To have adequate damage against the enemy tanks. Can also be more worth considering though if you have a tank support at least, like Alistar. Because you know you're going to be pumping a lot of auto attacks into Alistar. Or not less Leona, anything like that. Probably should have got a pink. I think I had enough gold. Since we want to be perma pushing as Caitlyn, I would say pinks are more ideal on her than other ADCs. This ADHD support needs to stop randomly hitting my minions. I accidentally cost myself a minion by going for the wrong minion. But then I also missed that other wrong minion because Lux hit it and Lux hit it herself. I ended up with a zero Lux hits out of two. Half of it my fault, half of it Lux's fault. Then she hits the cannon, which in an alternate universe could have cost me the cannon as well. Stop Lux, you're not helping me push. These minions are one hit, one hit from dying regardless. This might hit her? Oh, I messed it up. My bad. Oh, wait, what? Oh, she got hit by a Luxie at the same time, didn't she? Okay, that was unexpected, but nice one. Yeah, we can go for the Drake here. Do I want to shove it away first? I can, because the enemies shouldn't be contesting there anyway. Because it's not a cannon wave, I know I can shove this very fast. Ah, sadly, these casters are just one head away from death, unfortunate. There we go. There's no planning to go for. They pretty much got this Drake. I'm just going to throw a Q at it and base. Boom. So I'm always blasting supports for not uh, hitting the wave and I'm hitting the wave if we want to push. But at the same time, consider whether your auto attack is actually needed. Because my autos are doing about 40% of a caster minion's HP at the moment. So if a caster is like below 40% HP, you're not actually helping by hitting that. It doesn't do anything. You know, hit the full HP minions. That is, even for when I'm not doing like uh, the, f you know, 40% of uh, minions HP, it's... <sighs> It's still better to go for the high HP minions because you're less likely to accidentally cost me a lost hit if I happen to hit the minion at the same time as you. So if I'm pushing, you you know, go ahead, push with me. That is good. Hang on, might be able to get a kill here. I'll just disengage there so I don't take a bunch of damage from the surfing abilities, but nice damage. Yeah, if I'm pushing, you know, go ahead and help me push, but the lower HP minions are the most useless ones to hit. And at a certain point, you're not helping anymore. As much as you may want to. See if I can trap there. We do indeed trap there. I should have waited to see if Lux ult would actually <laughs> hit anybody there and then ult whoever it didn't. But worked out the same way either way. Nice one. You can see our ball in is just completely devastating. Their ball in is only really scary in the sense that they can combo their ultimates quite well. But it's not like as scary as, for example, uh, Misfortune with an engage support because Seraphine is just not really that good in the early game. Or Lockdown isn't that scary. And she has no way to guarantee her ultimate either. Well, you know, she can try and guarantee it with a re, but that is also quite unreliable in itself, so. Should be able to get this plating. There we go. It was a small risk because I don't have vision in the river, but I also have all summoners up, so I'm confident I could escape if necessary. Uh, the only awkward thing here is I might miss a wave if I base here. Do I I'm, like, when I'm this ahead, I don't necessarily need to drop a wave to get a good base off. It's a bit annoying because I'm, I'm 1v2 right now, so in theory they could punish it, and I might have to delay my base until Lux got back into lane, but they're not actually trying to punish the fact that I'm 1v2, so I will get away with it. If not otherwise, like, I don't, I'm not, like, my, um, base components aren't, like, that, uh, good, so I'm not being super greedy by delaying the base. I would rather get it off sooner than later, but I think I could delay it for, like, two to three waves just waiting for Lux to get into lane so we can get Pryo again and I can get a good base off. Basically, going for that plating is what cost me a foster base, but I think it was worth it, worth it in the long run, because it's not like I was delaying a huge pro spike. Like Guild Force, Infinity Edge, or you know, even the Storm Razor. It was just some small components. I will probably want to base again soon, though. 
I already base right now. Well, not right now. I would need to shove it away first, but I also don't think Stormers in itself is actually that big a power spike. Especially when I'm this ahead. So rather than basing quite immediately, I'm just gonna keep on pressuring. The one thing I want to do though is get some vision down. Okay. And we see Shivana on mid lane. Need to pay attention to her pathing. Hello. Drop under lock. Or under surfing, sorry. Was hardly even necessary. Okay, I didn't quite catch where Shivana went. I was distracted by the Lux combo. So she may be bot side for all we know. But I'm not too afraid at the moment anyway. I can't deny a wave here. I think we should deny a wave. Okay, at least we denied one CS. Thank you, Lux. <laughs> like I said, if you're the support, follow the ADC's queue. If the, if the ADC is hitting the wave, hit the wave. If the ADC is hitting the turret, hit the turret. If the ADC is not hitting the wave, don't hit the wave. The ADC is... Oh, way off. Holy shit. Need to flash that. Oh, that's a unit. Fuck, I'm dead. My bad, I didn't see him in time. My bad. I could have dodged that for sure. Yeah, if the ADC is not hitting the turret, do not hit the turret. Just follow my queue. Because I have something I want to do, and then you're getting in the way of me, of me doing that by doing the opposite of what I'm doing. Just because you don't know what I'm doing, like, you know, she might not understand or have thought of the concept of delaying hitting the turret to deny more minions from the enemies. You know, she can at least guess that, you know, actually, he doesn't seem to be hitting the turret. There may be a reason for that. Maybe I should stop hitting the turret as well, you know? You don't need to understand what I'm doing to at least respect the fact that I'm trying to do something. Or, you know, whoever your ADC is. I'm pro you're probably never going to support me. It is what it is. Anyway, we're going to go for Gil for us here. It's going to be really nice for getting the Trinomir. Also super good for dodging Yoni ult. I think I can get away with shoving a wave here. Yoni is dead, Misfortune is mid, so that's already two people that can't really respond to this. The most that could come is like, uh, Shivana and Seraphine, which I'm not too afraid of. So we can shove in this wave. Don't particularly want to siege there, so we're gonna rotate immediately to mid. Oh, there's a trap there. Oh. That's a shame, Lux. Like, okay, we get the mid lane turret anyway. Oh yeah, Drake's up. Currently lacking our support though, so it's not a good time to go for it. I'm gonna go shove in a wave, if, uh, if possible. This Yone is actually quite behind, although he probably got my shutdown, so... Yeah, I mean, he's basically got the same amount of items I do. Oh, what the hell? Wait, he's got another third Q he can use, Jesus. <laughs> in one single E cost. Oh, lost a lot of HP there necessarily, my bad. Probably should just look to base now. Although, mm, I'd really like to base on BF Sword ideally. But I can get Zeal on Long Sword if we want to go for the Drake soon. But they might just get the Drake here anyway. I'm just gonna stay, fuck it. I can also ult his Yone, make sure he's lower, less of a threat to me. He has nothing to generate a shield off of. He needs to at least... Uh, hit minions I think counts, otherwise hit a champion. Pretty sure minions count. Damn it, Mr. Cannon. <laughs> Hello, Shivana. I'm assuming she has something up her sleeve. I might have somebody with her. Um, I could just just already base, but if nobody gets this wave, or you know, if nobody else gets this wave, that's a huge waste. Looks like nobody else will, so I can go get that wave myself. I'll sh uh, grab this wave, then try and shove in one more before I base. Then I might have to return to bot lane. We'll see. Fucking hell. All 
Alright, at least we have enough vision to know that I'm perfectly safe here, so I can walk pretty far forwards to shove in this wave. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, what the hell? Plenty of vision, huh? Alright, well, I'm gonna have to leave that. If they're gonna push this as two, I can't defend, so... It is what it is. Weird choice to rush Axamark on Misfortune, by the way. She's actually doing weirdly well, by the way. I would have expected her to have died by now. Her, but judging by her score, you'd think she's doing fine, but obviously she got stumped in lane. As evidenced by her being 50 CS down. But at least she managed to avoid dying. Oh, set. Oh, set. Oh, no. Oh, no, guys. They might try and cheese me again here, by the way. See, she was there for a weirdly long time. But I'm assuming Misfortune probably also recalled if she recalled. But if somebody cheeses you once, you know, at that point they've shown their card, you know they're the type of person to cheese. So you should be aware of even more cheeses whenever possible. It takes a certain kind of mind to do that cheese that Misfortune tried to do to me. Alright, Pantheon is going bot, that's good. I'm gonna go for the Raptors, there's not much else for me to do here. I could like try and um, ult Seraphine for harass, but she's gonna block with the W shield, so I'd rather not. I'd rather go for full value ultimates if I can. Hmm, we got pretty good CS per minute. Nice, that's full value ult. No surfing nearby to shoulder. Nice one. Ooh. And she almost died because of that ult. Not quite, but... Oh. Fuck me. That was a close one. Alright, probably want to base here. Is that his ultimate that called me, or was it just a third Q? That was his ult. It was a hard one to avoid, considering I started in fog. But yeah, this is why Guild Force will be quite good. We can dodge those kind of unexpected Yone ults. I should have flashed it, though, because I did a flash. I, get, I, mean, I mean, I was full HP, so I guess I had time to have, like, I could afford to wait and see how much of a danger he really would be, because I did have teammates nearby. Definitely was, to be fair, yeah, more damage than I would have expected. Hello. Wow, goodbye, Trinomir. Always maintain a proper chain of command. Here comes Yone. Got him. Oh my god, <laughs> she was relentless. I would not have expected her to dive me that hard. Thank god we just finished the guild force, because that's exactly what saved me there. We got oceans, I'm also healing quite a bit here. Oh, that's my allied set. I didn't see him on the map, so I thought it was an enemy. Uh, probably gonna want to go for Fire Cannon third here. Okay, no red buff. Somebody else can farm that if they want. I just want a base. Actually. Okay, so Surfing is dead, and there's at least one person top, so maybe it's just time to keep on pushing here. Damn. 
Okay, sir, thank Jesus. Nice one, guys. And Seraphine died. What? She just walked into a pentanque or what? Start as low. Let's get this real quick. There we go. Alright, perfect. Now we 100% base. So yeah, because Seraphine was dead and one was top, I know that even if they send literally everybody that's alive towards bot lane, it's going to be only three. So that's 3v3 at worst. And there's a decent chance that not literally their entire available team actually goes bot lane. So in that case, it's a 2v3, so it's an advantage. So as much as I want to base there, if my team wants to keep on pressuring, I should follow up on that call. Because I know at worst it's even. And at best, it's actually, you know, quite advantageous to us. That's basically what ended up happening. Even if they ended up sending three total, I, I can't remember if they did. It's, it was still quite disjointed and we got to like massively chunk out Seraphine before anybody else even arrived, for example. So it was a pretty decent play to go for. Okay, I need 1200 gold for Farkanen. Let's go for the Drake. We'll just go for Savannah. My team doesn't need help with that, Drake. Right. <laughs> Lux, you can wait and see whether they're gonna flash. <laughs> if they're not gonna flash, then she is not needed at all except to try and kill Steel. So that was karma. Waste their ult and got nothing. That's what you get for trying to kill Steel. Hmm. Oh, what? Who did- who blocked that? Well, either way, I guess it was a full value ultimate, but... I wasn't expected. <laughs> Let's try and get Yone. Oh, he's dead, dead. Nice one. Don't know what we're doing in their base exactly. Thankfully, Pimpin is pushing this. This is much more useful. Close one, she almost snared him. Just gonna put some distance between us. And some traps between us. There we go. Nice. We could try and finish Seraphine, but it's not worth it compared to trying to finish this guy, I would say. I need the flash, he's actually just too sticky. Okay, nice. Good binding looks. Okay, there's the FF. GG. Alright, gamers, we are back for another game of Killing the Diamond. This game gonna be playing. Caitlyn Leeson into maybe Yas yeah, Yasuo Namumu. Don't ask me about the comps because I will not know how to answer. Just accept that it is what we are dealing with here. Leeson support, Yasuo ADC, Tom Kent's jungle, Vayne top on the enemy team. And we're going to want to try and punish Yasuo here as much as we can in the level 1. Wanted to try and hit him with a headshot there instead of take, uh, using it to last hit, but minion block prevented me from doing that, so we'll just hit a Mumu instead. But level 1 is where Yasuo ADC is the most vulnerable, because he doesn't have his dash to actually fight you. So because you're at range pretty hard, it's your time to strike. Try and establish an HP lead. So that later on, once he is actually strong, he won't actually be able to use it. I don't know why level traps here, by the way. It's kind of worthless with Lee and support. You only really want to level trap second. Paired with um, supports with CC where you can combo it. Especially into a ball in like this where I could en get engaged on. I really want the net for disengage. What the hell? Uh, I guess he DC'd then. Nice. I thought it was looking to engage at first, but nope. 
God, that is so bad for him. Look at how much CS he misses out on. Good enough. I'm out of here. Let's get on base. The nice thing about Lee Sin's support, at least, is that he brings a lot of damage to the lane. I will take double long sword, I guess. This can build into Noon Quiver. And based on the enemy comp, they're going to have at least two tanks. One is going to be on the support income, but still a tank. So we could do Kraken Slayer here. Alright, Yasuo's back. At least he's not fully DC'd then. That'd be boring. But yeah, the way Yasuo needed to play that in the early levels was just give up way more CS than he was willing to. He can play, like, even if he, obviously, even if he didn't DC, he was already, like, losing so much HP that he couldn't really fight us anymore. Which is really bad, because it, it's, it's not supposed to be the case that if you play Yasuo support, you can't fight until your first base. That is only if you're just so unwilling to give up CS that you're just taking so much harass in the level 1 that then you can't fight afterwards when you should be able to fight. You're just going to concede that level 1 is when you have to concede a lot of farm. And then you'll get more farm in the long run just by being able to fight in later levels. Or if you don't get more farm, you at least get kills. But if you're not getting kills, it's probably because the enemies are respecting you so hard, which means you're going to be able to get a lot of farm, making up for what you missed at level 1. That's fine, it's him alone. He's got one wall, doesn't he? Not willing to use it, though. That's fine. Uh, why is my Lisa in mid, by the way? I just noticed that. I gotta treat the actual effective range, by the way, as being the same of that of whichever minion is nearest to me. I can't, like, walk up to auto him there if I have to walk up to a minion to do so, because then he can dash into that minion and be in melee range of me, so... I think I'm in a good spot here, but I need to respect that. Otherwise, I will end up in a bad spot. A true professional is always aware of her surroundings. I should definitely go play some vision here. We don't want to overextend. We're running cleanse, by the way, since we're facing both Amumu and Ramus. Cleanse is really good against both of them. Speak of the devil. Yeah, I don't want to extend that and attack him a lot because he's still got his W active. I'm just going to deal a lot of damage to myself in the process. I'm going to be annoyingly cautious here. Okay, Ramus is back. Only reason now is even willing to go this aggressive is we do have time catch of the brush. I think he DC'd again. <laughs> no way. Okay, looks like he lives this time at least. Good for him. <clears throat> Yeah, thankfully, Tom can actually provide so much peel. Oh, hello. Ooh, I want to go for that plating. And there's still so low HP that I want to punish that, but... Nice one. <laughs> okay, now I can punish, I think. Yeah, Ramus is dead as well, perfect. Ooh. That's one Talon. I will not tolerate lawlessness. 
I think he gets another Q and just kills him there. Oh, no, he got way too greedy. God damn, Lee Sin. Oh, well. Anyway, I need to get out of here. I always aim to win. Might just rush Gale Force here, actually. It would be really nice against the Yasuo and the Amumu, I feel like. Particularly against Yasuo. And even the Yoni, should he ever ink me again. Oh, boy. That's not good. I can wait for another dagger. We're nearly there anyway. There we go. Yeah, I've got one extra longsword, but that'll build into something eventually anyway. It's all good. Kraken Slayer won't be particularly good in a lane anyway, I feel like. Well, actually, I suppose it would be fun into a double melee bot lane. But I'd definitely rather have the kill force. Kraken Slayer is not that synergist with Kaelin because her attack speed is quite limited. But it will be necessary, I think, in the mid game to kill a Momo and Remus. I just don't know whether to do Kraken Slayer before or after Lord Dominix. We'll see what we're dealing with at two items. I'm still flexible. So they are still here. We know Momo has an ult, by the way. Okay. Oh, that feels like my ult just went through the wind wall. <laughs> oh. Somehow I just got a... Goal between those two minions. Nice. He still it was still only level five, so I felt willing to play a little bit of aggressive there. Still got wind wall though. Or has it back up by now? All right, that's good enough. Need to go ward. Uh, Momo has a pink. He's gonna be placing it 100%. This ward will give me some vision of the. Ideally, that vision of the try because Ramus. Um, it's actually quite important to catch uh, Ramus starting his Q in here. Or, like, even here or here. But I just can't really place vision there. I could, but it would get immediately cleared, and I don't have um, backup to clear the pink myself. Even if I did, we like we don't really want to put ourselves in positions where they can't use an engage on us. I'm almost just 100% going to queue me if I go for that melee, so... I maybe could have queued the melee, but I was hoping to hit one of them. Failed in that regard. Oh, kill for us already. An enemy has been slain. Let's investigate. Yeah, they're not going to be freezing there. I could just base. Nice. This kill force will probably preserve my flash at some point, which is super nice. I'm on the way. Not super hopeful about how this fight is gonna go, though. Okay, I got a kill. I'm happy with it. Oh, hello. He's about to return here. I should have dodged that. My bad. Oh, come on. No! Damn it! I think I wasted my headshot on somebody else, didn't I? Because he flashed out of vision. 
Fuck me, let's see that again. So they did auto guild for us. Oh, no, no, okay, so it was a headshot, but it was only because the Mumu got trapped anyway. I should have just flashed over the wall, I guess. Like, um, probably ideally walk over to... Hang on. Uh, we'll do this, I guess. Double dagger, sure, should be fine. Yeah, I should have probably walked all the way up to here and then just flashed towards the turret. Could have also had the potential to, like, flash over this wall as well. I don't know. Yeah, just... Uh, he bought himself so much time with that flash going out of vision, it's sad. If I had vision of that burst to begin with, then he was just gonna die no matter what. Annoying. Hmm. Wait, that headshot went through the wind wall, I feel like. Did they shadow nerf the Yasuo wind wall? He's definitely pretending to be DC'd there. <laughs> he also was not good at that of that anyway. Okay. Okay, Talon, I see how it is. Is he gonna stick around and get the turret? Nope, he just wanted the farm. Fair enough. Oh. That's obnoxious. Yeah, I should have probably just led with the headshot for that reason. That way I wouldn't waste mana on getting some unbidding his windwall. And if he didn't windwall, then I would actually get the hit. I thought it would be down though, to be fair. That was my reasoning. For doing what I did. Actually, I gotta be a little more careful here. I shouldn't be pushing. They can zone me too hard actually if I start pushing. I'm being respect, like, um, or, like, disrespectful here, only because if is the one that actually engages with me, I have cleanse for that anyway, so it's not that big a deal. It's mainly the Windwall that I'm gonna be really respectful of, because if I get ulted by Yasuo, I'm a lot less likely to survive. Yeah, no more pushing. In fact, I shouldn't have even hit Yasuo there, I need them to be pushing into me, but knowing Yasuo, yeah, I mean, his Q is AoE, so... It's no biggie. Pushing towards us anyway. Oh, damn it. Any chance Mumu gets back in vision and I can ult them? Probably not. I didn't catch if he also ulted. I think he did? How is that always up, bro? Ah, uh, Mr. Cannon. Amumu might still be around. Seems like he isn't. Surely his windwall isn't back up. Oh my, okay, it went through it. Thank God. I swear to God, the windwall is usually way less generous than this. Or more generous than this towards the also rather. Some of the shots that feel like they should be hitting are actually hitting, which is not what I'm used to. Oh, hello. Damn it. I did the trap. Try and get him off me. Perfect. Alright, get me out of here. Um, it probably doesn't have vision. <laughs> hmm. I think we should just do Lord Dominic second. 
Should I wait for the Crick Cloak? I guess. My next item will build out of Dagger, so... Ugh, this is such a long time to wait, though. If I wasn't waiting, then 100% I'd sell the Dagger for Crick Cloak. I think I probably should have just done it, but whatever. The 100 gold that I've saved in the long run by not selling this Dagger. I probably could have made just by leaving the base sooner. Okay, at least I missed this cannon. Alright, don't miss this cannon. In theory? Okay, got it. <laughs> I'm gonna assume that Framus is here, that at least he hopefully can't 1v1 me at this point. Or at least won't be able to kill me anyway. He's actually half HP, this is not too bad. I just need to not hit him, and fight him when it's down. Wait, holy shit, he is actually just not taking damage even with his W down. Got him. I should have just skill first instead of flashed actually, but whatever. Yeah, that guy was incredibly hard to 1v1 while he was half HP, what the hell? And I was hiding out his W, like what? And with his W down, he was still so tanky. Okay, I can get Lord Dominix now at least. Hopefully that makes the difference next time. And I don't have to rely on him being super low before I even arrive. No stone left unturned. Nice one. To be fair, I would have played it slightly differently. Uh, if I knew the goal from the beginning should have been to run rather than to actually 1v1 him. Because I was focused on just kiting him instead of actually getting away from him. Oh, it's almost through Baron. Or are they? No. Oh shit, I thought it was gonna immediately ult. Okay, no biggie. Except he's done half my HP by himself, more than half. He's gonna flash ult me, ah, uh, it is what it is. Wait, I'd kill for some. Fucked me, my bad. I didn't realize I'd go for up until too late. Did it only just come up? Or did I, I did I even use it against Ramus? No, I didn't. It was always up. My bad, I forgot about it. <clears throat> yeah, I could tell at this point when he just walked past everyone, and especially when he healed, that he was he had flash up and he was gonna use it. At that point he's just so much faster than me, so there was nothing much I could do. Alright, definitely Kraken Slayer next. Let's do this by the book. It's my business to know what others do not. I don't have a trinket anyway. Hello. I don't have cleanse up anymore, so I gotta be cautious here. Even the smallest clue can break a case. At least it seems obvious they're not on Baron. Yet. Might be now. Somebody should place a ward. We have our support there. Oh my god. <laughs> How long? Like, what was he waiting for? Just place a ward, man. <laughs> Whatever, if our jungle wasn't there, there wasn't anything we could do anyway. It was 3v5. Your team has destroyed a turret. Seems likely they did actually start Baron sooner than I expected, though. Like, even while uh, Yasuo and Dumumu were trying to cheese us, they might have just been trying to distract from the rest of their team doing Baron. Oh, I need help here to survive at this, I think. Everybody just finished the recalls anyway. Well, if it's just him by himself, then I guess I'm okay. 
Oh, it's just let him give vision from me. <laughs> Annoying. Okay, he's not actually doing that much damage. Dude, worth the stuff, man. I know, right? That was a bit silly. He was like right in the area and just uh, completely unwilling to ward for some reason. See if we can contest this. It's not looking promising. I think we need to give this. Oh, he also was there. At least I betted the wound. Oh, god damn it. Ugh, my bad. Didn't notice his ult in time. I could have go for a step. Oh, wow. We actually won that. What the hell? Goodbye, Baron buffs. Who carried that? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Gwen and Talon. Probably mainly Gwen, I guess. She's pretty strong. Whoa, what is that Talon build? Yeah, Gwen was at... Well, I don't know if she was at Three Adams, but she is at Three Adams right now. Probably her doing most of the work there. Nice one. Yeah, with Lee pushing mid, we can do go do a camp instead. I'll do Raptors. Wolves would be fine as well, but Tom Kench wants to do the Wolves as his next camp, so I don't want to like force him to have to walk quite a bit further towards Raptors when Raptors are just about the same distance to me as Wolves are, so it doesn't really matter to me which one I do. But I do need to get something there to make up for the farm that I'm missing from not having farm to, on mid lane to go to. Can't really pop through there. Hmm. Okay, when will waste it again? That was really stupid. Just don't know if I can quite finish the honey. Okay, nice. Did he flash? He must have. Yeah. Okay. In that case, we should stop chasing. I'm just gonna go farm. There's not any objectives nearby. We can go for. Maybe somebody can push mid. Cool. I got my Kraken Slayer now. Alright, what next? I think Bloodthirster should be fine. Or even Bork, maybe. It's the double tank team. I think Bloodthirster will be fine for a mix of survivability and damage. I think my damage should be perfectly fine for dealing with their tanks at this point. Got him. I'm gonna go for Ramus. He's more likely to be able to escape them. Amumu, okay. Just barely get him anyway. Oh, no thanks to Tom Kench. That's nice one. Cool. Just one person alive, and that is Vayne. I don't think I need to be afraid of her. She, yeah, she's really behind. God damn, look at her farm. 130 CS up on her. Maybe her being that behind is how my team won the fight before on Drake. <laughs> Let's just disengage. I don't need to get anything more here for this to be good.
Never a dull moment. Should be able to get vamps up there and be off sword. Oh, no, apparently not. My bad. I'll hold on to the Dorn's Blade then. I don't want to get quick look. Considering I don't even have an Infinity Edge, so not a current amplifier. I don't think this uh, Quick Cloak is necessarily a significant upgrade over Dorn's Blade. I'm not here to serve. I'm here to protect. Okay, I was thinking Leeson would try and steal farm there. <laughs> uh, I can block them off here. They may have Blastcone in. Or may try and Blastcone in. I'm not in yet. Gotta focus a moment here if possible. Hard to click him, but just anybody but Ramus, so I'm not fucking losing all my HP. He's dead. Oh what? Soon he'll be dead. <laughs> Ramus just delayed the inevitable. Oh god, wait. Fucking hell. the hell? Okay, Ramus bought him some time to get some kills, I guess. Never mind. That shield was absurd. Goddamn. Pain alive. Was she... Is she AFK, actually? Oh, she might be AFK. Maybe that's how we won the fight. Maybe Vayne was AFK the whole time. I don't think so, though. No, I think of that Drake fight, she was there. But I think she's AFK now. Because there's surely no way she's just naturally three levels down on me. Oh, he's back. Let's get out of here then. Need to back off way further than this mini wave because he also can use it to dash onto me. If I just base in there, he can easily like just dash onto this wave and just rush into the brush to just to check if I'm there. So I cannot be making that mistake of actually being there because it is very predictable. I was really hoping I'd get more value out of cut down this game, by the way. You know, facing two tanks. It's kind of crazy that I don't have any more value out of that. That's why I, I wish cut down just worked differently. So it's actually like does something against tanks, like no matter what, regardless of what your own HP is. It's just kind of crazy that it, it's more effective on certain ADC than others, just based on their own HP and not based off of how the how tanky the enemies are. And that in certain games, you just won't get much value to cut down onto the intended targets just because they're behind or because you are super ahead. How much HP does Mumu have? B only 400 more than me, and he's a tank, man. So he's mainly atomizing armor, but my cutdown does nothing against armor, so I'm not getting anything from it. It's so annoying. Oh, I just wasted my cleanse, my bad. That's awkward. I didn't really get the fight there. Shut down. I need to leave. Ramos will go for me. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, that's a bit overkill, I feel like. Ah, and well. I kill him 100%. I'm way too strong at this point. Uh, Ramos? He's alone, so... Don't even bother eating away from him. 
Nice one. And he's gonna die eventually. It's a matter of when I catch up to him. Because I have 396 moves to be... He's got 380. At this point I could ult him if I wanted to be ultra careful, because he might flash out of vision, but we have some vision there anyway. He'd have to flash directly into here and somehow avoid vision the whole way. He's gonna eon to me. Nice. So there my ultimate gets somewhat blocked by the Yone W, but it's damage that would have otherwise been blocked by the Gwen anyway, so I still get the same amount of effective damage anyway. If Yone is gonna take damage during their shield no matter what. Which speed does Ramos have? Okay, he has a significant amount over me. Now my cutdown is suddenly randomly over doubled in damage. I don't know what the hell he just built that just randomly gave him a ton of HP to make it do something, but... At least we're finally getting some value out of it. And he's dead. Yep. <laughs> he's a goner. Let's see if we can finally get a Baron, though. Their Yone is still dead. Nice one. Yeah, we could just kill them. Half their team is still on base, so. Nice. Let's just get the Ocean Soul and make this game a piece of cake. Oh, okay, smart from Yone. Got him. And he goes back into GA. I pop my trap there. Sorry, buddy. Oh, it's just not fair, is it? Oh, he's got that stance. That's why he's temporarily survived. <laughs> I didn't actually miscalculate, I just didn't realize my full calculation would take some time to apply, you know? I lose far too much HP from hitting him. Doesn't have to be active right now though. That's fine, I'm not in danger here, so I'll just keep the cleanse in case I can use it for something more useful later. That is it, considering the only person damaging me there is the full tank supporter Momo, it's unbelievable I dropped to like 30% HP. <laughs> but we won, GG. Alright gamers, we are back for another game of Kaelin the Diamond. This game I'm going to be playing Caitlyn Lux into Twitch Morgana. Taking a little bit of a risk here and not running Cleanse against Morgana. I feel like it's worth it though because we're going to be wanting the Ghost to escape the Twitch later on, later on when he becomes more of a threat. It's going to be really good for escaping Nocturne as well. Speaking of Nocturne, I'm going to want to at least itemize Guild Force for him, so... Kind of awkward we don't get a single chance to build Infinity Edge yet, because I think it's actually decent, but for now I think every game has benefited more from Guild Force. Uh, nice. Well, I missed one last hit in the end there. Bit lucky. Now we're just going to hammer away at this turret. Oh, no way. What are the odds I get rooted right at that moment? Damn, that is insanely unlucky. Oh well.
Twitch might be stealthing. So I'm gonna back off a little bit. Probably not, I imagine. Yeah, I imagine he's probably got W and D. I know he's definitely got W. It's more likely he's got E than Q as well, but. Don't wanna make assumptions when he goes out of vision. So I want to try and tank this wave, so if somebody tries to step on that trap to get rid of it, then I'm going to be in range to follow that up. Yeah, the trap is gone now, so it doesn't matter. We're gonna keep pushing, because Twitch wants to look the base now. We're gonna want to shove. Make sure that if he does base, he's gonna miss out on a big cannon wave. Alright, looks like he is actually gone, so there's nothing to punish here. I'm not gonna go bother going for the plating. How far is she going to go to cancel my base? Not as far as she should, I think. Or is she? She... Oh, dude, she actually had the right idea, but she didn't actually go as far as she should have. So I just cancelled my base for nothing. Oh, well. Props to, for her, props to her for having the right idea. Shame on her for not actually going all the way through with it. What a waste of time if she's not actually going to make sure that I'm in the brush and cancel me. without first examining the evidence. And we're going for Berserk because it'll make it easier to dodge Kitlin hooks. Easier to dodge Nocturne. Well, avoid. Get away from Nocturne ganks. Walk away from Twitch if he finds a decent engage. Hello, Nocturne. That's sad. You won't escape. I think Twitch might have actually based. Because Morgana seemed to be just wanting the last hit there, which would imply her ADC isn't in the lane. So we're time for him to base though, but... So we obviously don't have the opportunity to shove the server on her turret and make him his farm, because we're too far away from the turret to crash there, so we're just going to build up a slow push instead. And as soon as he gets into lane, we're going to be able to use the slow push to massively pressure him. The only thing is that Morgana W is really good at thinning out slow pushes. <clears throat> Oh boy. That's fine. Should be dead there. Nice one. Kill goes to me. Nicely done, Zack. Holy P Zack. Well, so much for the slow push. Should be able to get a plating and also this wave. Like you can do most of the wave clearing, so I'm not too bothered about hitting the wave. I just need to hit each caster like once. There we go. Okay, this might be trouble. He is ghosting. I have Berserkers though, so does he though. Hmm. Oh my god, how many wars does he have by the way? Did he? What the hell? He has vision here. God damn it. Which means she has vision here. 
That's sad. Hmm, really annoying. Lux is gone for so long, by the way. What? Oh, she went to do a gank on mid lane, I guess. Saw Twitch coming after me, decided that was a great time to recall. Okay, that explains why she was gone for so long. Cool. Yeah, well, I don't think I should have really expected it either, to be honest. With the information that I had, that it is what it is. I ever could have played the actual chase better. To actually get Twitch killed somehow. But I don't really have time to review that. Wait, I could have cancelled this base by the way, my bad. Could have even had a kill straight up, I think. Wasn't paying attention there properly. Yeah, we'll rush the guild first straight up. Gonna give me a lot of safety for the Twitch, gonna give me a lot of safety for the Nocturne. If I hadn't been able to afford the BF search straight up, then I might just consider doing the Storm as a rush instead. Just for the sake of being able to buy better components. But since I can't afford the BF sword, that's no longer a concern. Okay, got destroyed. I mean, we, when we have a slow push going like that, I mean, you gotta respect that. <laughs> they had no chance to engage on us there because our wave was too big. And he just walks up to the wave while we have all the advantage in the world. That's what happens. Hopefully I don't regret not using that on Twitch, but I'm looking to base anyway, so... I want to get my cooldown off. Alright, I'm out of here. I'm not interested in the rest of the platings. Careful. Sheesh. <laughs> do, do not- Oh my god, why would she wipe out the wave, man? Bizarre. I had close to 10 CS per minute before then, and it just, it just basically cost me 6 CS a minute. Oop. Ow. I should be fine though, I hope. Yeah, barely. Could have even maybe killed him with EQ, but I wasn't sure how long the route would last, so I wasn't sure when to use Q for the EQ combo. Okay, we're gonna binding down. I don't have to be afraid of Twitch, I'm pretty sure. In fact, I can try and go for a kill because Melt's coming up soon. Got her. <laughs> nice spell shield, bro. Might get ganked by Twitch here. He might have ghost up back up by now. Oh no, if this is for me, then I'm pretty much doomed. Damn it. Oh, but the binding came just in time. Didn't even try and DPS Nocturne here. Okay, Twitch does have Ghost. Let's try and get away from that. Okay, cool. Well played. Do not touch the wave locks. Nice. Three 
Oh, that was actually a close one. Wait, you are kidding me. Oh, I should have been fine there without having to flash. I was trying to like bait up fucking stuff like Twitch ult, but... Bill Force can't go through walls and like flash. That was a bit unfortunate with exactly the position I was based in. We're gonna maybe lower, but it's Twitch that I want to get low. Uh, Lux, can you come bolt in already? With Lux, I don't think I have to be too afraid. Nice. Or Zack. Oh, what was that flash? Hmm. Okay. Got a flash at least. Just making sure... She's not gonna freeze that, but now we need the base because Twitch is gonna be back soon. Won't have ult, but he will be definitely a lot healthier than I am. And next up, we definitely want to do Storm Razor. We don't really need to maximize our damage this game, but we do kind of need to maximize safety because their comp is basically uh, Assassin ADC, Assassin Jungler, Assassin Top Laner. But tankiness is not even that good because we should expect to die in most circumstances anyway. The most important thing is that we can mostly avoid all of this. If we can just, you know, itemize stuff that will avoid it. Ooh. Panthen is the only one who has, like, limited enough damage where if we survive the burst then we might live, but... Ideally you don't want to build survivability as an ADC, not until at least... At least third item. And even then that would still be only stuff like shield bill. Should be fine if Twitch shows up, I believe. Can try and deny a wave here. Cool. I don't actually need to be the one to get a last hit on it, by the way. I can just let the minions do the work, so... As many minions die as possible. Do I want to go here? I probably do. Should matter have ult because I actually could clean up one of these guys. Well, at least Morgana anyway. Okay, we got that guy anyway. Ooh. Where is that four here? Oh my god, he was so fast. Wait, he's so tanky, actually. What? I'll pop Ghost and place a trap in. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, I'm too slowed. What the hell was that, man? I guess, um... Stradbreaker was the main reason I died there. Yeah, fucking hell. Stradbreaker and Tobby's... No chance of killing that guy there. I guess I should have just popped go sooner and focused on running, but definitely would have expected him to die sooner. I'm back on the case, and this time I will not fail. Hmm, it's smaller than the diagram. I should be going bot here. It's a little bit risky though, but so in theory, I'd hate to be going in a sideline here because it's Caitlyn versus Twitch. I'm super vulnerable to Twitch, but I'm also just so ahead of Twitch. I believe I can actually probably just one v one him. I don't, I don't know if he even has his first item yet. If he does, he might be a little bit of a threat, but I still think I win, partially because I'm a level up on him as well. But if I was not so ahead of him, this would be so stupid because he's also likely to be bot lane. Uh-oh. He does have his first item now, anyway. Oh boy. Nice one.
Where's that? Oh, there. The cages for that Q2 up here. Yeah, using F keys to find out where knocked on his old thing can be quite useful. Wouldn't have really mattered in this case besides just confirming that he wasn't going for me. Yeah, let's uh, ignore the turret. We're not going to get that tier anyway, but we can maybe just start the Drake. So hopefully we get that. Well, Nocturne just made his play top. I got plenty of mana, so I don't mind spamming Q here to get this done faster. Only really need one Q though. Oh, Jungle wasn't there. It's fine. That's nice one. I can I could do with basing for some reserve immediately. Oh. It's gonna be a pretty significant power spike here because I really actually want the safety from it at this stage. Can easily be the difference between escaping the nocturne uh fear tether or not. I'm struggling to escape over now, even with E and Gilforce combined. Yeah, somebody should get that top line with. Noxon is dead, but I'm not sure I can go for the turret still between Pantheon's Twitch is basically invisible global threats. Oh, hello. What the fuck? What the hell, Lux? What is up with her ignoring me dying, man? Oh, okay, whatever. Whoa, did he just... He flashed. What? I didn't even get the red buff, you're kidding me. Dude, even the healing there would have been insanely useful for me. God damn it. I don't really want old timer digger because he's really useful even when he's low HP. And his turrets do most of the fighting for him anyway. It's much more valuable to old people who get more screwed by being low HP. Like Morgana's kinda useful because it limits her ability to move around with her ultimate before she has to stopwatch her Zonyas. Uh what do we want to do third item here? I think we should be fine to do. Barkanen. It's considering sure bow as well, but I think we could do that fourth item maybe. If we decide we need it. Nocturne isn't actually that bursty, so for Nocturne, the safety that we need is just more mobility focused rather than burst. Ooh. Oh, hello. Got him. It's knocked and it's so insanely tanky, bro. He's dead. Behind the minions. I wish he can't get me. Uh, I know Twitch at least is not around. He's bottling for whatever reason, so it looks like I'm fine here. Alright, kind of a close one. Twitch still pushing. One of my teammates is going to be able to defend that. I don't know if any of their team is going to be able to defend this, though. So it's a good push trade. Him letting me push mid by pushing bot is just not as worth as having come to defend me. He's going to try and do it now, but it's hopefully going to be too late. We'll get that turret. Back off. Retreat into the pink wards. This pink should be particularly safe. It gives me a good angle to escape if I randomly see him. Even try and turn on him. I don't know if it feels worth it to base here, actually. I was so close to Fire Cannon because I'm gonna have to base again soon. But I will. It's not like I really miss farm for having gone for that base, though. I don't think a single mid lane CS died, so. It feels unsatisfying, but there's no reason why it wasn't practical to do. Yeah, 
Yeah, I've got it. Drake up in 30. I should have time to base. Probably should have ulted someone before I based, though. I'm not going to cancel my base for it, though. Ooh, I will have to cancel my base to join this fight, potentially, though. I see Twitch. I'll just ult to either one of these. Right, I guess I'm not basing yet. We'll shove in this wave. Get the Drake. Do we want to get... Oh, we could do Baron, actually. We, we should screw the Drake. Trade for Baron would be the right call. You know what? We can actually do it. Nessus is right. Just start it. He can use ult. I don't know if he will, but he could, u could use ult. And just start massively DPSing it down. Ooh, somebody's around, though. Who is that? Pantheon. Okay, so we do... Ooh, hello. We do need our smite around. Before we can finish this. Oh, god. So close! Okay, I should hopefully live at least. Jesus. <laughs> Ocean Drake potentially saved me there. Alright, not bad. Nasus won the fight against Pantheon. At this point, I'm a, I'm a lot healthier than Twitch. Even if he got a Honey Fruit, he wouldn't have healed as much as I life sealed. I do need to leave, though, because... Norton ult should be up, I imagine. So I can't show Envision anymore. Now that I expect him to be in the area. Alright, we're gonna do this, and I'll definitely get Vamp Scepter next, so I can be as healthy as possible at all times. I reckon we should be fine to do Bloodthirster instead of Shield Bow, though. Like I said, I'm mainly not really afraid of their burst, which is what Shield Bow is. It's anti-burst. Even though I want survivability, that survivability can ma mainly should come in the form of mobility to escape their threats. Particularly the Nocturne. And also, it can also be just um, general sustain, so that I'm always full HP is also just perfectly fine by me. If I'm not able to be burst down at full HP. Which by this, if this switch was further ahead, then sure, Shield Bow would be fine, but I'm not expecting him to really one-shot me. You can see, that actually was almost me killing him, even though he got the jump on me in a really bad scenario. As long as he's behind, he's not that much of a threat. Kind of awkward, but I have to enter this fight somehow. Oh, I thought I... Damn it. I could have ulted him as well, but I thought I was in range for my auto. Hello. Alright, he's dead. There's a bit of a risk, but... I think she... No, she's not gonna die to that. I think she has Zonia's? No, she has arm guard. I could tell that she must have some form of armor, because usually she would die to that. Alright, literally everybody is dead. I need to stop showing in vision once Nocturne revives, though. We'll just get this turret and leave. Boom. No, I'm out. Well, I can go for his camps. I guess, if they're up. Nice. We have lifesteal, so we know that we're actually gaining HP from this in case I'm needed for a fight again. I guess I don't mind him stealing that if he succeeds, just because he needs the mana more than I do. God, I hope they don't have vision here. No, it's not for here. Either way, I'll still look to base in a safe spot. Got yeah, a spot lane. Not bad. Could try and do Baron, maybe. It's a bit late now, though. We could try it, but we need Zac. N never mind. Well, there are no longer three bot is the issue. We missed our chance. Maybe I should actually do... Uh... Yeah, Lost Whisper here, I think, is actually the best parse I can pick up here. Better than BF Sword. I'll just go for Lord Dominic. The Vamp Scepter was fine, but... I don't think I actually need to finish upgrading it. It can just build into... BT final item. All having served as a... Not necessarily a better pass bike, but definitely better suiting my circumstances than... Quick Cloak would have before. What's going on there? Why is Morgana randomly in melee range of Zack and dead? I guess... Oh, I guess maybe he jumped over the wall while she was dewarding or something. I'm 
Oh my god. <laughs> that is sad for Twitch. Alright, we got Soul coming up in 35 seconds. Yeah, Nasus, buddy, this is why I think split push is shit in Loilo. You can bring three enemies to you while your entire team is around the Baron area and they still won't start Baron. <laughs> kind of defeats the point of split pushing. There's no point in it in Loilo. One be adding team fights is the only way to go. I got everything up. I'm confident I can survive a Nocturne ult here. And I got my team surrounding me, so Nocturne, I think, would die for the... For even trying to kill me there. That's why I can confidently walk up and farm. We should just force the... Burn now, I would say. Just start it. That's not good, Lux. Oh god, this is a lot of... Fuck, I don't have cleanse. Okay, Storm Wizard. Okay, Nocturne died. Ooh, okay, that was a really... Unexpected, simultaneous collapse from all sides there. Still managed to live, though. Where was Twitch that whole time? Oh, bot lane, of course. Why wouldn't he be? She's dead. Storm Wizard gets me to catch her there. Did she just- she must have flashed. I think I still get her though. Yep, nice one. We could end to be honest, but... Sure, let's finish the Baron. Okay, we can go for the wolves here, just for the sake of doing something. I also need to pick up the red buff, actually. Just noticed that. And then we should push bot lane, because that is where the next objective... You know, bot side is where the next objective will be. I can have this. If Nasus wants to split, he needs to be top lane, but doesn't have TP, and again, I don't necessarily... Well, I mean, it should be fine. We have Baron buffs, so it would actually be a fine time to split push here, because so long as the team is pushing, that's all he actually needs us to be doing for him to split. We can also go mid, though. That's fine. We can also just go mid again, actually. I didn't notice that Inhib was spawning. I could actually be in trouble here, by the way. I don't have Gold Force. I don't have Flash. I now have Gold Force. Ooh. Ooh, I could have ulted Twitch, my bad. Don't think that kills. Oh, wow. Okay, super close. It did actually kill. We can actually coordinate these two waves to crash under their Nexus turrets at the same time. Okay, close enough. Nice one. Dealing with two Baron waves at the same time is much harder than dealing with two Baron waves one after the other. Perfect. Three waves now. Oh, I got hit. No biggie. GG. Alright, 
All right, gamers, we are back for another game. Killing the diamond. Probably should disengage from the Jinx. All right, not a bad trade. And then we just got a kill from our jungler, though, which is an ideal. Did I update the win loss? I started on seven wins. I've had three wins. No, I didn't update it. Hen. Wait. Oh, I typoed. Hen. There we go. Hate not having the win loss up to date. Okay, Jinx is actually quite low. She's um about the same HP as me even without her potion. Like she already used her potion, so. Yeah, we're in a not bad spot here. I only got an assist as well, so because it was split among at least four people, she won't actually have much gold from that. Ow. Need to check my own potion now, though. It is true, though, that Karma has a lot more pressure in lane than Shen does. <coughs> Wouldn't really say we have a particularly good bot lane here. Caitlyn would benefit more from the kind of support that Karma is rather than Shen. And engage support with no particularly long lockdown, so I can't even easily combo my traps with his engage. So we're just gonna level E instead for that purpose. Well, for that reason. For the purpose of disengaging and trading. Ow. We, sh we should have focused Jinx there 100% though, not Karma. Might be able to get Karma though. Jinx should be trading back onto me. Jinx should be protecting Karma. What the hell? She should be protecting Karma by force, like forcing me off of her. Because I can't just ignore Jinx, particularly if um. Hang on. <clears throat> this looks like it could be a kill. All right, nice one. Sadly, he will die, but hey, I'll take it. I'm just gonna immediately recall as well. I don't think I have time to crash this. Should have time to base before Karma gets here though. So this is pretty solid. Yeah, these melees going under turret was inevitable, so it's not like a perfect base with the way of pushing towards you. You want to avoid the melees going under turret in that circumstance. So it's just about even a uh, just about an even base rather than a favorable base. But that's a pretty decent outcome, I would say, overall, compared to trying to shove in the wave and failing because I'm too low and karma arrives into lane, or I get ganked by Echo or anything like that. At least I understand that even if this wasn't favorable, it also wasn't a disaster, whereas the prospects otherwise range from a bit more favorable to disastrous. I'd rather go with the guaranteed slightly unfavorable, if anything. Nice. Managed to land that thanks to the Berserkers. Quite a nice base on Caitlyn. I would rather prioritize the um, uh, Noon Quiver, but it's one of the ADCs where even if I could afford my full item, or you know, pretty decent components towards my full item, I would still rather prioritize Berserkers because having movement speed is just so useful on Caitlyn for getting in range for the headshot. Same logic as one thing Swifties on Jin for the fourth shot. Oh wow! What? How did we not see him? That is crazy. Huh? I guess he must have ganked here and like through here and then just only become visible like here or something. Weird. Yeah, I trolled. No, honestly, his sacrifice may have saved me. I had no summoner, so I might have been in trouble there. I could have let myself get zoned here, it is what it is. Nice. 
We managed to thin out, thin out this wave enough that we clear it fast enough so that if the enemies wanted to base here, they're just not going to be able to. Uh, did Jinx pick up a gold? No, she only picked up an assist. But she might already have enough gold for... Yeah, she should already have enough gold for no cover, so she might have wanted to base there, but... If shoving that wave so fast, we just don't give her a chance to. I want to try and hit a champion here with my next auto, because I got fleet charged up. There we go. I get much more healing from champions than I do minions. Stuff is something you always want to keep in mind when you're running fleet. So you're maximizing your laning power. There we go, and again. Basically, by just making those two decisions to really go out of my way to hit a champion instead of a minion, I just gained like 80, 80 extra healing, which is quite a lot in lane phase. Ah, there's minions in the way, so I can't E her, which would ruin that trade. So I need to disengage it. That's headshot and fleet. Oof, could have done without getting hit with that, though. The minions need to stop boxing whichever minion I choose to hit, man. It's quite unfortunate. <clears throat> yeah, you can see, I mean, Shen hasn't touched a champion in a long time. This is why this isn't ideal, because ideally, Kaelin should be really bullying the Jinx, but... It's basically 1v2 in trades. The only thing Shen does is all in, which... Kind of incompatible with my shove and poke playstyle that I want to do. Okay, once uh, Karma Shield goes on cooldown for whatever reason, that's when I will want to use ult to harass. There it is. Nice one. <laughs> what a juke. I always have my E available in case I need to disengage from the Karma W, which would be a concern on a more immobile ADC. I wouldn't be able to step up like that. Get a plating here. At least my Q is pretty good at harassing by itself. I'm probably not gonna look to base here until I can force Jinx to base, because I'm still pretty healthy, I've got a lot of mana. This Jinx is really gonna have to be forced to base here sooner, she's looking at a potential death. Okay, so she's based. Uh, I'm not really bothered about the planning, I'm just gonna base already. Ideally, I should do it out of sight, though, because if this Jinx is smart, she would just be ulting me here to cancel my base. Alright, Storm as a Rush should be perfectly fine here. Um, I think we'll do Infinity Edge this game instead of Guild Force, just because it's like... Finally a game where I don't need to run Guild Force. I'll see, what the hell is going on with that 20 CS on Jax? What? I am not Piltover's dog. I work for its people. No one else. Okay, I was thinking of ulting Jinx as soon as I arrived, but Karma just got him range to shield her, so we're gonna chill. Oh, I shouldn't have hit that. That's fine, I get it anyway. I want to place a ward first before anything else. And let's go. I got all summoners up, so I'm not too afraid of Echo. I don't care that we don't have... We could have deeper vision, but I'm not that bothered about it. Ow. Ow. A pop ghost. Ow. 
Oh, I was trying to make karma a free kill for Zed. <laughs> what? How did he not go for karma there? He even has ult. Okay, weird that nobody died there. I yeah, didn't even have to use flash to escape that gank. Gotta be careful about trading here. I do love a good mystery. Got a headshot on fleet, so I really want to hit a champ in there if possible. Perfect. Oh, and also crit chase shot as well. I now have even more incentive to go out of my way to hit a champion whenever Fleet is charged. They might be choosing to base here. I'm gonna just immediately base, I've already got my item, Storm Razor. I think Static Shift should also be fine still on Caitlyn if you want to do that instead. It's just really situational. Like, if you need the safety from Storm Razor, I think that would be ideal. If you don't need the, storm the safety from Storm Razor, I think it's still fine to do Storm Razor. And I think it's also fine to do Static Shift, really becomes a matter of personal preference at that point. Hmm, that's not good. Still goes to Echo, at least not Jinx. An old Jinx while I can, while the shield is down. Okay, it hits come instead. At least it's still not blocked by a shield, at least. Could have been better, though, for my team. I'm gonna stand still here, because I don't want to waste this, uh... Fleet proc on a minion. <laughs> so I don't want to generate charges towards getting it early. There we go. Oh, didn't expect them to walk up like that immediately. Ah, I need to flash, I think. Oh, I'm still dead. My bad. Mm. Yeah, my bad. I needed to e karma if anything. Lost my- ah, I was fucking meaning to block the e on Jinx anyway. My bad. Well, how did Shen end up top, by the way, actually? Holy shit, I hadn't noticed. This guy loves roaming. Maybe he he might have ulted top. Was his ult on cooldown at that point? It was. Okay, that's probably how he ended up top then, I imagine. But it wouldn't be the first time he just randomly left lane and just didn't come back for ages. <laughs> Oh good though, we still have a lead. It's on me for giving up a death there anyway. Um, I don't really want to be top lane, I want to be pushing turrets. There's no turret to push on top lane. Somebody should go top, but... Better somebody else goes in the side lane. I want to stay mid. <clears throat> Pot on the trail. And it shouldn't be the support, let me tell you that much. Alright, shoving a wave, and I can now just rotate to the side, see so if we can maybe do anything towards this Jinx. Oh, Karma shows up. Oh well. She might have actually died if not for that. Oh, hello. I didn't even notice him. Oh, I didn't mean to actually turn this into a full run. Expected to be able to turn around if uh, it wasn't going to be a kill. Then Echo blocking me off kind of forced me to keep running, but... <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, only missed two CS for that. I'd like to think my ultimate cost jinx more than two CS. Shen just casually lost setting. Bro thinks he's a solo laner. I don't know why I'm placing a trap there. The fucking spirit can't move. Leave me alone, please go Hurled. Hurled is fine, true. But while my team wasn't in position through Hurled, I think it was also the right call for me to just rotate there and see if I could do anything, which I could. I did a lot of damage to Jinx. Now that there's a wave here, I can return to mid. Nice. Now we do Hurled. Shen needs to stop side laning. It's basically farm now that me and Zed can't go for, because Shen has been farming it. Ooh, I was going to be able to ult the Jinx, except... She died to a tentacle. Wow, well, that guy's somewhat tanky. For how behind he is. Oh, okay. GG. Alright, gamers, we are back for another game of Kellen to Diamond. This game, I'm going to be playing Caitlyn Morgana into Ezreal Vigar and Samira mid apparently. Okay, I was really confused about their comp. Right, brand jungle, that makes sense. I forgot that was a thing now. Actually, I really wasn't sure where the comp was going, but I would have guessed Vigar mid. Brand support. Anyway, we're going to be playing Killer Morgana, which is a pretty strong duo in the early game. Or at all stages, really. Works very similar to... Lux Caitlyn. Except we have an even bigger window to land our trap under Morgana's snare tar target. Since the root lasts for longer. I can't really get in range for a trap there, so I'm just going to follow up with the Q instead. No mean is in the way, so it's still very decent damage. Try and reach him there. Ooh, just barely got him. Nice. So even when I'm not in range for landing the trap, I can still land a Q. Which is such good damage if there's no minions in the way. Which just so happens has been the case twice. Here I should be in range if I didn't mess it up. Nice one. Absolutely brutal combo as you can see. We hit Vagar with a Q twice, but nothing to Ezreal. And then Ezreal gets hit by one binding and boom, dead. That's Morgana Caitlyn for you. And now he should be dead too. There we go. I was trying to delay my um, <coughs> damage as long as possible there. Just to make sure I wasn't getting stunned or turret with turret aggro. But I needed to be absolutely... So, I couldn't hit him while I was rooted by the Morgana, uh, Morgana root because I was still in the cage. But I just need to make sure I land my trap. And then I know he's going to be rooted long enough that I can just wait out the cage a little bit. And then hit him towards the end. I know as long as he's rooted by my trap, then I have the damage to kill him before he can start moving again. Until then, I'm free to just sit in the Vagar cage. No turret aggro, no consequences. Damn. <laughs> I'm not here to serve. I'm here to protect. Mm. 
Not really going to be able to get him range for the trap there, just purely because of the... Ooh, I didn't mean to walk backwards. <laughs> My bad. Because of the cage, I was going to say. Ooh. Did I trap? Oh, my trap didn't go off. Damn it, my bad. Oh, that's weird. I definitely pressed W. I don't know why it didn't go through. Ooh, that was a close one. I was confident that would be able to... Oh, what the hell? I was confident I would be able to step away from the cage there if you used it, but that that was uh, maybe a little bit closer than I thought it would be. <laughs> Technically, I was not wrong, though. I did escape from the cage. I assume Vega's probably based. Brilliant. Yeah, there he is. Oh, I can just walk through the cage, actually. And he's dead. Poor guy. Squeezing in as many autos in Ezreal as I can. There we go. Mm, it's a little bit risky. Okay, I see Brand at least, so I, I'm pretty sure I'm good here. Okay. We'll force the flash, that's fine. And we also zoned in from a lot of farm there. All of the farm, actually, since he wasn't willing to return. Which was probably for the best. I think I'll just, um... Do the Static Shift this game, just to show that off. It's been a while since I played Static Shift Killin' as well, since in the last video, which was my... Only Killin' video in a long time. I had only been using the Lethality build, so I definitely didn't test Static Shift there. Actually, ooh, this would actually have been the perfect game to test Lethality on, by the way. I could have just, uh, got... Um... What's it called? Um... Serrated Dirk on my first base instead of... Noon Cover. Didn't occur to me in time, though, but their entire team is just super squishy. Even at Rally, as far as Bruises go, is fairly squishy, so... Yeah. If there was a game to test Lethality on, probably would have been this game, but too late now. Get it, Morgana. Nice. Never a dull moment. <laughs> Heard your fucking lane. Calibrating. And he's dead. <laughs> Didn't even need to use my E. This Morgana's uh, pretty on point with the Qs. I got a I gotta give her credit. I was hoping he'd walk back in there for a Q onto the coster. Oh. What is Bolin of Zero control wards? You know, that is a good point. I did mention, I think, in the first game, why control wards are good on Caitlyn of all ADCs, and I proceeded to never buy a single control ward in this entire video so far. I'm not about to start in this game, though, but maybe next game will be the redemption. Nice one. Hmm. I don't think I can kill him, especially not with that exhaust, but I can definitely damage him. Ooh. And, oh, that was almost a kill. Almost. Not sure why he stepped onto that, though. I'm sure that was on purpose. Can't have been by accident. Alright, Samira's missing. She might be roaming on us. I think it's a good time to base. I've already got static shiv anyway.
Yep, hello Samira. Hopefully Morgana's fine. You know what? I'll get the control word. I just happen to have the exact amount of gold. I think that is... Well, I don't believe in God, but I think somebody up there might be trying to tell me something. Maybe it's just the will of the universe trying to tell me. You need a control word. Dumbass, buy it, you fucking idiot. Ooh, I almost hit her with that. That might have been enough to kill her with Holt. Oh, so close, man. Okay, there is a way. If she is in the brush, there is a way I cannot play her. Oh! Hmm, hang on. Ah, I fucked it up. Oh my god, I just barely live. Ezreal dies. Oh, let's get with the world. Perfect for the execution, couldn't have played that better. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was a bit greedy of her to go on Morgana there. You, you don't want to trade one for one and give me the kill. Trading one for one and getting my shutdown though, that would have been huge. Yeah, we should probably just base here. Yeah, that pink didn't turn out to be terribly useful. It would have been... So what I actually had in mind was I didn't expect... That was a good read from Morgana. I didn't expect Samira to do that. I thought she was going to, like, sit here. And just be content with the fact that I couldn't actually, um... Try and kill her without face checking. I must always be three steps ahead. But what I could actually do was... I, I, I was thinking that it would be too much of a risk to enter this brush. And try and kill her from there by being out of sight. Because the, the fact that I couldn't see her, but she could see me, was the main advantage she had there. I was thinking, okay, so if I clear this wave, then I place a pink in here, then I enter this brush to make sure she doesn't have a ward there. Then I know that we're about, you know, neither of us have vision, the advantage of vision. Then I place a ward in there, and then I, I then I do have the advantage of vision. Then that might be enough to a player. That was what I had in mind with my pink there. But I placed the pink, and oh, it turns out Samira was actually behind there. Yeah. No idea where Vagar is right now. He could be flanking me. Could be in the brush. Oh, there he is. Oh, he had vision of that. Jeez. I'm stuck in such a tight corridor here, man. Holy shit. Ah, I was hoping I'd hit him with that. Never been stuck, like, with such a narrow path caused by a Vagar cage before. Goddamn. Oh, that was a terrible one. Yeah, he's got plenty of room to move there. That was not a great aim. Okay, some are dead nice. Ow. Don't need to get hit by that. Yeah, I think the main advantage of getting Static Shiver over Storm Wizard is that it's definitely strong in the early game. Should be dead to this. Nice. <clears throat> Because it just straight up gives more stats, particularly it gives 15% more attack speed than Stormers are. I think the AD is the same these days, right? Oh, actually, Stormers gives 5 more AD, but overall, 5 AD versus 15% attack speed. Static Shift clearly wins that. But uh, the difference in stats just becomes less and less significant as the game goes on. Same for the um, extra wave clear that you get from Static Shiv. Just stops mattering less and less as your wave clear just becomes naturally really good from all the items you have. So Static Shiv falls off, whereas the safety that you get from Storm Razor is always going to be good. So that is the main difference between them. If you want a stronger early game, generally you will have a better one with Static Shiv. So... If you don't really need the safety from Storm Razor, and you're not sure whether you want Static Shiv or Storm Razor, well, that is the difference between them. I hope you decide. Scaling versus... Early game, I guess. Hmm, somebody just revealed me. This word there. Oh, it's probably Vagar. Me miss not by a long 
Samira's not having a great time since her failed room bot. I think I think that was her first death of the entire game, and then she just died twice since then. Completely unrelated to me. Yeah, I was guessing they had vision here because we saw Vagar using a plant here, so he probably had time to place vision here. Okay. That should go bot. Hot on the trail. Or gank as well, that's fine. Just as long as he's not just standing in the open trying to contest farm with me. She doesn't have W, does she? So there is no relic coming from the side, though. Ooh, nice one. She's about to get stunned. Uh, okay. Oh, the Darius pull. That's what pulled her out of my trap. I was like, how did I fuck that up that hard? <laughs> I don't know why he just pulled her randomly right as she got stunned. What a pointless time to CC her. If anything, just pull her after the stun's over. But even then, it would still be unnecessary because at that point, she'd be rooted by my W. There was just no point in them ever using either. Still, no real harm done. In base for Infinity Edge already. Somebody really should have uh, already farmed that ball in with, by the way. I guess if nobody else is going, then I'll have to go. Cause, yeah, I'm going to have to go because you can see one solo laner is top lane. Well, both solo laners are top lane. So, if, obviously, they don't want to be farming in the same lane. So, one of them is going to have to leave. Now, would it make more sense for Zed to leave and go mid? Or would it make more sense for Zed to leave and just walk all the way from top lane all the way down here to bot lane? Look how fast it takes even my camera to do that. Obviously, he wants to go mid. So, I have to let him go mid just... Because otherwise he's not going to have a link to farm at all. Because he can't really get the ball in in time. In a reasonable time anyway. So that's why I have to go bot there. Now, did he actually go mid? No. But that's, you know, I can't control that. <laughs> in theory, it was the right call for me to let him go mid. It's out of my hands. I don't worry about that. Not my problem. I'm just concerning myself with making the right decisions. Whether they turn out right or not, I don't care. Really? Ugh. I can maybe just try and solo the Drake here. Realistically, who's gonna stop me? Besides Aurelia or Samira, or both of them combined, maybe. I just don't think they're gonna have vision though, that's why I'm gonna risk it. Plus, I think we're ahead enough that I don't have to play this fully seriously. I can take a risk and see what happens. Just for the sake of taking a risk. There we go. Pop ghost and chase her down. Ah, no vision here. What? I placed the trap and I still didn't get vision of her. <laughs> I'm sorry, Samira. That was funny. Yeah, it's weird that my trap didn't get vision of her, though. I figured she must have kept running a straight line, but no, she did dash on me. She was there. Whatever. Oh, he's got Everfrost, doesn't he? I gotta be cautious about that now. It's no longer just about... Um, his cage. <clears throat> I think this kills him. Oh, damn. If I'd done it slightly sooner, maybe. I misclicked my first attempt at clicking R on him. <laughs> oh, well. Uh... Third item here, we can do Fire Cannon. I can already base for quite a lot of components here. Zeal and Kirche Shard, no point delaying this. I am not dog. I work for 
its people. No one else. I'm not here to serve. I'm here to protect. Oh, okay. Fair enough, Juju. All right, gamers, we are back for another game of Kenneth the Diamond. This game going to be playing Caitlyn Milio into Vayne Lux. Running the cleanse for the Lux. Wasting the cleanse because I don't need it. Let's crack this case wide open. No, because I misclicked right before the video started. Oopsie daisy. That's fine. I mainly need the cleanse for later levels anyway, I would say. Uh, if I was facing Caitlyn Lux, okay, fair enough. Cleanse, not having that early, would potentially be a disaster. But there is no particular synergy between Vayne and Lux roots. So it's not actually that scary a prospect. The only reason I still want it anyway is because Lux herself actually becomes scary with her own root at level 6. But before level 6, when she doesn't actually have a combo, so to speak, uh, I'm not that bothered about not having cleanse. So, really minor mistake to make, I guess. Alright, we have Milio, doesn't have any CC of his own. We're gonna use E instead of Root here, so we can get these trades off. Lovely. Love it. What the? Why would she do that? I mean, I guess she didn't know that I had my headshot charged, you know? She might have not reacted to it in time, but... In what world is that smart when you're, ten, like, 20% HP, bro? <laughs> Just preserve your HP at that point. Oh, well. Just a lot of loss hits, but for a kill, I'll take it. Oh, damn it. Oh, my mouse control is all off this game for some reason. It's better. Nice. So if we can look the base here. It would actually be not bad to actually just stand cheese though, because I think this Lux is going to be basing. Hopefully they don't have vision here. I don't think they should have placed a ward here. Yeah, Lux is basing, so we can try and abuse Vayne here. Let's go. Oh, wow. Lux appears right at that moment. Uh, Or does she? Okay. But yeah, at this point we've established such an HP lead that even though I have like more gold to base on here uh, than Vayne does... And I could gain an advantage. I think I can gain a bigger advantage by just staying in lane and abusing this HP advantage. Got her. You need to play safe when you're losing the trades, man. Like, once you've already, like, decide, like decidedly lost the trade, you know you're pretty much not going to be getting a kill anytime soon without, like, a jungler gank or something, because... Hang on. Okay. <laughs> that was really cocky me. I don't know why I was so confident my net would both land on her and also kill her there, but for some reason I was. Honestly, in hindsight, stupid risk to take, but oh my god, that was such a style move now that, after it actually worked. Got them. Oh, are we getting ganked? We are. By a Master Yi. And the headshot is gonna be gone for Melio. I'm really bad at actually using that EW combo in a practical manner. Alright, that's fine. We don't really care too much about the damage we take, since we're recalling anyway. What was I even saying? What was the explanation I was doing when, that I got interrupted by? Oh, yeah, I remember. Hang on. We'll just get the Kurtis shot, this thing, nice. Potentially could be another lethality angle, but... It will definitely be better for melting the Mordekaiser down. Yeah, but anyway. <clears throat> Once you've already taken, like, a really, really bad trade... It's pretty... Uh, it's what I would call a decisive trade, where it's like, okay, shit, I messed up. Unless I, ran, like, play safe for, like, the next five minutes and randomly regen enough HP... ...to get the full HP without taking any more damage then I'm just not going to be winning uh, lane here until I get my next recall off. So your objective at that point is just to switch over to uh, preserving HP. There's no point trading anymore, because even if you can take a favorable trade, 
you still know that it's not going to be enough to actually turn the lane around until your next base. So even if it's a favorable trade, it is still more beneficial for the enemies to take that trade than it is for you. Because you're still going to be the one that ends up getting close to death, while they, even if they're dealing less damage than you, are still not going to be put close to death. So at that point, you know, it's just beyond cocky to continue playing aggressively. There's nothing to be gained at that point and everything to be lost. Like, theoretically, if, if I'm like... 80% HP, right? And Vayne is 20% HP. If I trade one auto with the Vayne Q, who wins that trade? Vayne. Because Vayne Q is more damage than Caitlyn auto, just a regular random auto. But is it worth the risk when Caitlyn is 80% HP and you're 20% HP? No, because it doesn't matter how many slightly positive trades you take, you're never going to turn that situation around. That is why you have to play safe at that point. Obviously, t Vayne is making some, like, t taking this, ex this example to the extreme, right? Like, her decision-making is obviously very, very, very dumb. But it also just really highlights a fundamental that she is failing to grasp to an extreme, obviously. Which is, you know, once you have decisively lost a trade, stop trading. Nothing good can happen at that point, even if you can take a couple of individually good trades. It's gonna be useless. Useless at best. Terrible, disastrous at worst. See? What is the point of that? What was she gonna gain there, even if she landed that Q? And won that trade? You should be on what I call HP preservation mode. Planning to preserve HP at all costs. Ooh, okay. Worth a shot. It's not a cannon wave, so I'm gonna stick around to shove this. Why not? These casters are the only ones that are at risk of not dying to my next Q, so... I think they probably would have anyway, but... There was a chance any of them might not. It was those. So those are the ones that I auto-attack. Uh, I really want a base, to be honest. I could do Infinity Edge again, I think. Kill Force wouldn't be useless, it would be quite useful for escaping the Yi, in fact, but I think that's pretty much the only real use for it. But th th so the reason why I actually prioritize Infinity Edge here is because it is it is also a completely valid defense, uh, defensive tool uh, to save yourself from Master Yi by just completely one-shotting him <laughs> with Infinity Edge crits. It's not like Nocturne where there's no like significant, no expectation I can have that I can just fucking kill him before he can fear me, which, and the fear if I get hit by it is probably gonna kill me. So I need Guild Force defensively there. Master Yi, realistically, I can just fucking kill him if he goes on me. Especially when I have, you know, a lead like this. Oof. Script like confidence, script like dodges. I gotta back off here. Vayne could stealth onto me. Maybe I shouldn't have queued the wave, actually, but... Alright, nice one. I'll play the Momo. But of course, the script-like confidence comes from the fact that I'm not a scripter, but actually I have cleanse, so I know it's not the end of the world if I get hit by something there. I take Loli the queue. But it just looks clean as hell when you take a risk like that, knowing that it's not actually that big a risk because you have cleanse anyway. But you just end up not getting hit anyway, so it just looks... So cool. Alright, time to base. I got static shove. Or I could run... Storm Razor as well, but I think static shove is fine. I would... Benefit somewhat from the Storm Reserve for sure. It's definitely gonna scale better, absolutely, 100%, no question. But again, I think I can mainly just rely on hopefully just bursting down that Yi really fast. Like, mainly I'm just concerned that his movement speed is so high it's pointless to even try and outrun him because he's gonna reach me about the same time anyway. And then Mordekaiser in his Death Realm, I can try and kite him, but it's not gonna work at the end of the day anyway, again, so. Yeah. Might as well just go for the early game, power of Static Shiv. 
Bane has to block that, that's fine. Even if it's not a kill, it at least sets them both up to be low enough to die if they don't recall here. I cleanse that because I know that she's gonna combo me, and I, I'm not actually bothered about getting hit by the combo, but I know if she uses her combo, she's locking herself down there. So that was actually, that was basically me just baiting out the combo by letting myself be rooted for just like, I don't know, 0.5 seconds? Ah, oh, this is bad though. Just so she's baited into comboing me where I know- oh, damn. Ah, oh, but I can't get Bane though. So close though, if I actually landed that. Well played from Bane. Yeah, just letting myself be rooted for just long enough that it baits out the Lux combo, then cleanse it in time that not only do I dodge the Lux combo, but I can also walk at her while she's self-rooting herself. And get a headshot that one-shots her. Didn't see her before she stealthed onto me, did I? Yeah, no, she came out of nowhere. Damn. Unfortunate. I don't think there's any expectation that I could have actually flashed that. Oh well. Okay, let's try rotating mid. Still a minute and 20 seconds before platings fall, so maybe we can get some platings here. Oh. Oh, they burst them down so fast though, god damn. Nice one. Ideally somebody should go bot. I'd like it to be Jace so I can keep on pushing platings. Is he gonna move? So he doesn't have mana. Guess I'll rotate. Damn it, I'm not gonna get the cannon. Sad. Vayne might be in that brush, he might try and land a cheesy E on me. Gotta be careful that I'm not setting myself up on this wall. That's the main concern. Let's get the streak. No, oh, Emilio. Oh, nice one. Does she die to that? I'm not entirely sure. Nice. Okay. I'm good to back off now. We got the Drake, right? We didn't need... Gotta respect the LeBlanc a bit. If she wastes cooldowns, shoving the wave, then maybe I can walk up. Just gonna play some vision there. Get us her Q down at least. Yeah, we win that trade. Plus, I got more sustain than her, even if only a little bit. I don't have life still yet, but I do have. Well, I have some lifesteal from Bloodline, I have Dorn's Blade, I have Fleet. It's nothing compared to what I'll have later, but it's definitely more than LeBlanc has now. So basically, even to, to um, even slightly unfavorable traits are still actually favorable for me. If I can hit her with a Q, then she's dead to my next ult. This is a bit of a risk. Uh, I shouldn't overextend here. I don't have a shutdown, so it wouldn't be terrible if I die, but I'm just going to risk it with the ult. I don't know if this kills her, but... With the shot? Okay, I didn't, didn't think so, but I'm not sure I'll get a window to try and queue her. Safely, at least. 
had more, more of my team backing up, I'd be willing to take that risk there, but nobody's around. And I don't want to rotate here, I actually just straight up want a base for my Infinity Edge. Ideally, I mean, arguably I should have gone for that Herald, but it looks like he's already finished that by himself anyway. Probably another lane, by the way, where I should have bought a pink ward at some point. Killen's pushing power just means she can very easily always defend those pink wards. That's why I really don't mind buying pinks on her. On top of the fact that she pretty much always wants to be pushing, which, you know, by nature leaves you more vulnerable to ganks as well. Two reasons why you want to buy pinks on Caitlyn. Or, you know, can at least consider it more than other ADCs would. Obviously, you're seeing that you can get by just fine without it. And she's dead. I got static shift, so if I... You're kidding me! Nice. Okay, I don't want to extend too far for that. LeBlanc. Okay, nice. Oh, I'm actually dead here, I'm pretty sure. Unless... Oh, nice one. I should have ulted Vayne. Vayne could actually die here, LeBlanc can't. Vayne is squishier. Whatever. Gonna, gonna go ahead and base here. I think I'll actually prioritize building vamps up there here. Just general safety. Probably for a Bloodthirster third, rather than the regular Fire Cannon. Because I feel like just always being full HP here is gonna be super valuable. And then allow me to just maintain high pressure at all times. Because the more aggressive I can play while still always just being full HP just means it leaves very little opportunities for LeBlanc, for example, to do anything. That's my main reason, is LeBlanc, really. Because she can't, she's not really seeming like she can quite one shot me, but if I do get low enough, she could actually have some pressure over me. So if I'm just never dropping from full HP, or I drop it, but immediately get back to full HP, then the game is just unplayable for her. Don't want to overextend. Hopefully I got the full local gold for that as well, not just the global one. Close. Yeah, I want to get the streak. Another trap, he has to drop his Meditate. Boom, still gets hit by the trap. He needed to drop it sooner. That's actually a nice interaction between between Caitlyn and Master Yi. He can't meditate for too long. Otherwise, he's fucked. Same way that Caitlyn hard counters Zonya's in stopwatch. A lot of the time, it just does more harm than help when you're facing Caitlyn. I could just already base, to be honest. I want to get my BF sword. It's a significant bar spike. Still leaves me with enough time to get red buff as well. So we're not getting it before the recall and then just wasting it. By recalling. Do the scuttle crab. Vayne is bot, so this is a good time to start Baron, I would say. <laughs> nice. Well, the jungler's dead. Absolutely free now. If there was any doubt. We do have smite, right? Ooh, we do not. When is it up? Seven seconds. That should be fine. We don't probably don't even need to pause our DPS. 
Oh, but it, Mordekaiser could actually... Yeah, get rid of the boss gun. Because Mordekaiser could actually ult a Mumu and remove... Any chance of a Mumu smiting so anybody could try and steal. <laughs> nice try. Uh, I can literally already base again for Bloodthirster, so I guess I'll do that. Do I want to shove in a bot lane wave? Ideal macro would at least be somebody going bot lane, but I don't think we need to risk ideal macro at this point when we can just group and win. If I go bot lane, then I'm completely isolated. I might be able to get caught out, and I don't think that is worth the risk just to get, you know, squeeze out the maximum possible amount of farm for both me and my teammates. So we'll just rush straight to mid lane and ignore bot lane. We got cleanse in case I walk into a Lux, a Lux binding from Fog. If we'd ulted her, she would have been dead. I could combo it with my trap. Dead. Unless the clone blocks it, damn it. Oh well. Look at that lifestyle I gained from that, by the way, Jesus. Focus the vein. Nice one. Oh my god. Nice one, guys. Uh, nice. Yeah. You see, I'm just always full HP after this blood tester and this vamp scepter. Blood tester in particular, obviously. Which leaves them very little opportunities to get ahead with their, you know, or, you know, make a comeback with their bursty champions like LeBlanc. Mainly it was for the LeBlanc. GG. Alright gamers, we are back for another game of Killing the Diamond, and I am so sad I didn't turn the video on just like two seconds sooner because Lux just flashed from here to here. No context whatsoever, just randomly flashed. Sort of like my cleanse from earlier, except much more embarrassing. And actually went through a wall. She was aiming that shit. Anyway. Gonna be playing Caitlyn Lux into Misfortune Janna. Gonna ignore this last hit so I can try and trade back here. Boom, nice one. Much rather prioritize trading back over just getting random lost hits because losing lane will cost you more lost hits than just simply giving up on a lost hit twiddle. Okay, we hit level two. Oh, we have Lux, I could have level traps. It doesn't matter, she missed. Alright, good trade. I cannot afford to falter. Brilliant. Yeah, so for me it's a bit unfortunate that Jonah just happened to go trade with me during a couple of times where I actually had lost hits available. But yeah, I was prioritized trading back over taking lost hits. Unless you're actually, you already know you're going to be losing the lane. And you want to, you know, just prioritize maxing your loss hits because you're not going to win trades anyway. But at the same time, I'd also avoid trying to conserve your HP because by staying in lane longer, you will also be able to stay in lane longer. So it really, uh, <laughs> staying in lane longer, you will also get more lost hits is what I wanted to say. But it really depends how much damage you're going to be taking. Dead. Nice one. We keep going on to Misfortune. Okay, fair enough. We managed to hit that Q on her as well. Maybe I shouldn't have uh, eat there. Should have waited to see if she would actually wisen up and just flash or disengage at least. And if she's running away, then she's not hitting me back. That was definitely the most cost of or that was definitely the most like HP efficient way to navigate that fight. That would leave me with the most HP afterwards, but it wasn't necessarily the best way to navigate it for actually picking up a kill. Oh well. Ooh, I'm so sad I didn't pick up like one more last hit here so I could get Berserkers, but oh well. Critter Shard should also be nice.
Forgot the run cut down in this game, by the way. Would have been really useful against Kazanti, Amumu. It was actually on a jungle income this game, not a support income. So much more likely to build HP compared to in the previous game. That we faced Amumu with cut down. And also we're facing Kassadin, who is likely to build a Rod of Ages. Which would also benefit from cut down. Just looking to thin out this wave because I don't particularly want to trade into a bigger wave. I can avoid it. There we go. Okay, John is roaming. Lila's already dead though. Okay, Momo's going mid, he's not ganking bot. Free to play aggressively. How did my fleet get wasted there? I didn't even get the last hit. I do love a good Oof. As expected. Still don't know where Janna is. I don't think they returned to bot side because I'm sure they would have passed through the river vision. I guess Janna probably based. And the Mumu just went topside. Or is farming his bot side camps. Alright, and she's dead. <laughs> Getting Lux, everybody. Full HP misfortune, that's what happens. If you get hit by one Lux binding in this lane. I could do with basing. This is a cannon wave, so this shouldn't be able to shove it too fast. I want to base in the middle brush here, though, because Janna, if she was trying to cancel my base with a random blind Q, she would aim it here, most likely. Do not have to stay. So you're going to take the whole wave, and then I'm going to miss out on a cannon wave, which I don't want to do. Shield is about to run out. I'll ult. Don't particularly care too much who it hits, although I prefer Misfortune. Nice one. I want to base either way, so I want to get rid of that cooldown. No point sitting on it. And we can pick up a pink ward, of course. Finally, I remembered. There we go. Okay, I'm going to shove in this wave, then I'm going to place my pink ward. I don't want to place it now. Because they might be just now placing a ward there, and then if I want to defend that pink, I'm not have to miss out on this farm, so I'll shove it first. Place my pink here. No wards to clear there, that's fine. Go for the pink ward now. Ideally, Lux would also have a pink to place there. Need to walk at the side of the minions here so I don't get hit by Misfortune Q, ideally. At least I only got hit by the one. Or I couldn't get hit by one of the ones that was falling low, so I wasn't a crit. Overall, I'm sure I won that trade. We can just ult her. Hopefully, John isn't in the lane. Nice. Oof, close. I feel like that almost hit her. Something's going on over there. I'm going to rotate over. It's too late. It's going to disregard the rest of the wave because it would be worth it. With shot. Only took one throw shot as well. Ooh, and if I sniped her with that. Oh well. Where is Janna though? Should have been here by now. Oh, she's mid. She might have rage quit the lane, I guess. Didn't quite catch where she went after mid lane. I would assume she's just gonna regank mid. Either way, Misfortune is left, so we're not afraid of too much of a gank, anyway. Oof. 
Ooh, if she got hit by that. Oh, I'm out of mana. Okay, I tried the EQ there. I'll just recall him since I'm running low. Or I'm gonna cuddle Misfortune in a sec, but thing is by now Jonah Shield is back up. Maybe I'll stay here because I don't want to drop a wave. I can be patient and not drop a wave in future. How much do I need for my next item anyway? Alright, that's fine. Ooh, okay. That was at least one flash. That might have been two even. Oof, I didn't realize she was gonna just trade up trade with me or I would have just used my E sooner. Try to go for the same combo I went for before, which might have actually hit her this time. Just auto E auto since I don't have mana for Q. Ow, ow, I I'm too stubborn to flash, I'm sorry. I'm not- I'm never gonna flash there. <laughs> Fuck me. God damn it. That's sad. Do we not have Lux W? It's possible we didn't. It's also possible she just simply chose not to use it. Oh well. Ah, and of course she's serving the kind of wife. Uh, this could be good. Pop go, see if we can maybe get her. Yeah, we got her. Ah, she didn't get Lux. Can you just leave? I just want to push this turret, man. Especially want to be here when it dies. There we go. First turret, plating's up. That's a lot of gold. Alright, what are we building this game, by the way? We can do... Oh, they are surrendering. What? Huh? That's a false surrender. What the hell? I guess we're running hard, GG. Alright gamers, we are back for another game of Kill into Diamond. This game we're going to be playing Caitlyn Lux again. I appreciate that these supports all know about the Caitlyn Lux duo. They are surely not all just picking Lux because they want to solo carry 1v9. Surely. Against Tristana Brom. Tristana setting up the kill because my Lux uh, actually happened to give up a kill at level 1 to an invade, which it was AFK. Happens to the best of us. Kill or no kill, though, level 1 is not where Tristana shines at this lane. She wants to have at least level 2 so she can all in me, because uh, I hard outrange her, so she doesn't really want to take up front trades. She wants to just straight up all in me. Brom is also not really going to be able to engage at this... Well, he's never really going to be able to engage, at least until, like, level 6 or something. Best he can do is try and land a Q, but if he doesn't land a Q, then Tristana's playing alone. So. She's already start, uh, off to a really bad start. She should have been trying to avoid taking damage. Um, I'm going to stop hitting Brom, actually. It's much more worthwhile to hit Tristana if I can also be in range of her. Got a headshot. Let's focus it on her. Perfect. Overall, I'd say I'm pretty satisfied with this matchup. It's always risky for Tristana to pull in here because if she jumps in, if she gets hit by Q, she's probably going to get one shot. And they're both just super vulnerable to our high range bot lane. If they don't find an all in, then they're going to be struggling hard. S struggling super hard to survive. Oh, th though, granted, true. There is a Zac on their side, which could turn things around. That is actually a really good jungler for them to have against our particular bot lane. Since we want to be perma pushing and constantly punishing this bot lane. But Zac has such great ganks, it may backfire at some points. But we'll see. <clears throat> Probably want to go kill for us at some point for the Zac. Oh, Lux is already dead. Pfft. Yikes. I'll disengage here. I don't necessarily benefit from extended trades against the Tristana. Here we got our jungler here. Damn. Just on a flash, by the way, right? Oh no. Well, that's fine. I guess it's worth my cleanse for the Brom flash. Okay, not off to a great start. Didn't even require the Zack. In fact, we got the gank and we still got pummeled. Close. 
Try the Kerchase shard, see if we have enough loss hitting power with just Kerchase and not double longsword. Means we're missing out on 5 AD. The main thing I want to check is if it would be enough to one shot the costers under turret, which is a pretty nice breakpoint to hit. Usually it takes double longsword no matter what DDC you're playing. But some some ADCs can do it at 15 AD, which is Kerchase or Vamp Scepter. Others can't. It's annoying to find out you're playing one of the ones that can't. Lux, that is actually freezing the, la the lane. I cannot believe my eyes. Nice. That is actually a really solid freeze. This might cost just on our wave. I got my Kerchase stacked up here in case I needed to loss at the cannon. Oh, I'll miss this melee. Yep, she missed out on an entire wave. This just on up, bud. So we're obviously still very much behind, but at the very least, we have about a more than 10 CS lead against Tristana. 13 CS lead, which is really big. It does go a long way towards trying to compensate for the kills she has. No way Tristana based, right? Again? So soon? There's not a chance. Okay, she's ganking mid. She is playing one of the best ganking ADCs. We have time to try and show this Tram Punisher, hopefully. Gank is already over there. They're already gonna be headed bot. I'm not sure I actually make her miss much farm, sadly. Didn't get enough warning that she was roaming, but no vision of it happening. Okay, I should be able to at least get a plating here. I just need to make sure I'm not getting flanked. Ooh, I'm gonna take the risk anyway. Get one hit off. Ooh, I'm getting punished here, I think. Okay. Oh, damn it. Whatever. Oof. It's a hell of a risk, but I guess... Did I get the plating? I assume so. I'll be sad if I didn't. But yeah, these two traps basically force Brom to have to take the long pathing around. Zach isn't in the brush, is he? They definitely have vision, I'm guessing, from the way they walk forwards like that. Uh, Brom, do you want to, like, save your ADC or something? <laughs> huh? I was literally just thinking in my mind, like, man, it's gonna become hard now because now that Justan is so ahead, she's gonna have so much damage. And Brom can just, like, block our damage to stop us from shutting her down. And then we just catch her and just burst her and shut her down and Brom just doesn't do anything about it. <laughs> cool. I'll take it. Should be able to shove one more wave here. Could have done with releasing her E slightly sooner. Oh god, that was smart of him. Mm, I'll just do as much damage as I can. Yeah, good cheese from Braum. Alright, gonna be headed towards probably Storm Razor this game. Kraken Slayer wouldn't be bad. It would be better if I'd comboed it with Lethal Temple, though, which, to be honest, maybe I should have done this game. The combo's actually very tanky. Uh, we'll do. Actually, I wanna do Berserkers, yeah. Perfect. Let's have more mobility. More safety against the Zac. Yeah, I probably want to do Stormers of this game. Good against the Garen, good against the Tristana, good against the Brom, good against the Zac. Oh, was any of them low for low enough for me to actually ult for a kill? They might have been. There's no way that how do they base super far back every time? At least Brom is in that brush. Oh, 
Ooh, I got vision to ult him, but he probably a shield. Yeah, that sucks. Damn it, I should have thought about that. What a waste of a cooldown. I just knew I had a very limited window to have vision of him because of the Lux ult. Okay, well he's super low now. He can't really follow up when Tristana gets back to lane, hopefully. At least not without the same kind of flank he had before. Uh, Lux is roaming, which means I am vulnerable technically to getting flanked here. If he wants to try that, I'm gonna invite him to bring it on. I should have saved the headshot for Tristana. I should try and fight her here. Oh, God, I don't know why my headshot would just would not target her there. That fucking blows. It forced me to overextend. Fuck, man, I couldn't target her. I guess I was clicking the turret by accident. It's stupid, because I was not in range to auto attack the turret, but I was in range to auto attack Tristana because she was the one that was actually marked. It definitely should have just let me auto attack Tristana. Uh, so ridiculous, man. I didn't have to get that close to her. It's just because I interpreted those clicks as me wanting to auto the turret. Uh, but I guess I needed to, like, click way behind the turret so it would only, like, it could only interpret that as clicks on Tristana. I don't know. That would only work when she was, like, significantly behind the turret, though. I think she was, like... Well, she was initially, I think, behind it. It might have worked. Yeah, you can see this, uh, the weakness of our bot lane is engage. I didn't expect them to actually be able to be pulling off engages, because Braum is not actually that good at engaging. But Shastana herself does have amazing engage, which is why once she snowballs, it just suddenly becomes not that hard of a lane for her. Started with that level 1 kill from the invade. I'm just going to keep pushing here, I don't know if... Ooh, actually, I can definitely kill one person here. Maybe even save Lux. Oh, damn. Ah, but I'm not gonna kill her with that, though. Fuck. My bad. TF wasn't in here, was he? No, I don't know where he went. No, TF. Not TF. Zach. He probably just jumped away. Yes, the, uh, the snowball started with the kill on Lux and the invade. You know, oopsie happens. I've been known to go FK at level 1 plenty of times as well. Maybe not literally here, but I have done it, so I can't complain too much, but... Then getting caught out at level 2 or whatever it was just really sealed the deal. That was terrible. Unless we get a turret. See, this is how the lane pretty much should go. Like, anytime Braum tries to engage like that, you see just how much damage he takes. The tough part is when Tristana can just jump in and not get one shot. And she doesn't have cleanse, so that's basically just down to Lux missing Q. And then Lux failing to get away from the Tristana engage as well. An ally has been slain. Like, so long as Tristana can't really get a full reset on her E, then we should have been fine. But I think in the very first fight, she just... Lux just sat there and tanked it, pretty much. Oh, well, uh, we do have a significant CS lead, at least. But we also shouldn't have let the Tristana have five kills, so... It's not the worst case scenario, but it's definitely not... Even the average case scenario I would have expected. Um, do I actually want to go... Yeah, I do want to go for... Oh. <laughs> I do want to go for uh, Guild Force here because we want to be able to avoid the Zack engage more easily. Our E is very, very clunky. Leaves us with a very fat hitbox. It's very slow. Easily interrupted. Guild Force is a lot faster. It's more reliable at dodging Zaki. Even if we dodge the Zaki with our E... We still would appreciate another dash to make sure he can't hit us with a Q. Oh my god, they're actually here. Ah, oh, I'm actually just dead. Should have warded. That sucks, man. They're doing all the right things and we're not doing all the right things. 
Like, I can't... It's not even just that Lux is playing terrible, but they're also playing very well, which would not work if Lux also wasn't playing terrible. But she is, so it's just the perfect storm for them. Mm, they got significantly uh, less behind in CS from that as well, sadly. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Bit tilted. They might try and dive me here, that is what it is. Can't really afford to give up farm here. Should have tried the headshot just on another. Is Brom still there? I don't think so. Oh, he is! Like, that is so misleading, man. That's all I'm willing to do. I uh, could tell... Well, I kind of imagine Tristana would still be somewhere at the back. Uh, we could do with Lux just following me here and just using her E on the brushes so we don't face check. But we want to... Oh, God, she's there. You know what I mean? Like, they play smart. Like, I expected her to be recalling there, you know? I'm just that we need a Lux to hit the binding. Yeah, so what I would usually expect is that Tristana's trying to recall. So she's recalling somewhere here. So we want to cancel the base. We want to use Lux E's to face check here. What I'm not expecting is Tristana to do a very smart cheese here. She can only works because they're so ahead because Lux was just dumb. But it's the situation I find myself in. Sadly. But again, props to Tristana. And the Braum as well. What kills me is that they both have played very smart in terms of finding cheeses to... Hang on. Hopefully she doesn't have heal. Oh, thank god. They've both, both been very smart in terms of finding cheeses to force the all-ins that they need to force because they just get stomped if they don't all-in. So that's, uh, at least off the top of my head, the Tristana all-in we just saw from there when I was... You know, I guess she was she knew that I was smart and I wanted to, like, go for cancelling the bases here, so she looked to punish that. And then there was also the Braum who was like 20% HP and still stuck running lane there anyway just sitting in the brush knowing we wouldn't bother checking the brush because why would a 20% HP Braum stay in lane which is exactly why the cheese is so good because it's so unexpected so it's in that brush flanks from behind gets another free all in so they do play really really smart as well props to them for that ah oh, damn oh, I'm probably dead here I need to try and Risk the wall, but I can't. I'm tried. Yeah, this game is looking pretty doomed, sadly. Of all the games to have... Well, it's not like our entire team is struggling, right? But this Jace is really, really behind. And the rest of our team is just even at best. So what an unfortunate game to have our lane just completely stomped. Because there's no chance of getting carried here. Or no chance of even our team just like keeping us in the game long enough for me to uh, get strong again and be able to carry fights. It's like, no. I needed to have a lead so I could carry this game. And because I don't have the lead to carry this game, I'm going to lose this game. I can already tell you that's what's going to happen. Sometimes you get lucky when you lose lane and you're in a position where you can still expect to do somewhat well. But I'm not expecting that to be the case here. Okay, this could be a call here though. We're going to use... Oh, I was going to use Ult on Tristana, so we could help Gwen. Nice. But Gwen got the kill by herself, so awesome. Anyway, I got a shutdown there. Gwen also got a small shutdown from Tristana. Well, you never know. If they do uh, happen to throw enough, there is a chance we could carry. I'm just no I don't have the expectation that they will do that. Usually I have, like, no matter how behind we are in these videos, I have some expectation that I'll probably be able to carry. I'm not expecting that here. I have to rely on the enemies, uh, like, playing really badly, and I can't really expect that. I'm just going to try and play well enough that I can abuse it if they do. Which basically means I'm just not going to give up. Because you never know. Okay. Maybe you want to do probably Lord Dominic, sir, I think. Uh, this Garen surely is going to base and get something, right? Because no way he's only on one item while I'm on two. His similar kills and only 40 CS down. Doesn't even have a Doran's item. Your team has 
do with somebody defending against Tristana. She's gonna get one turret for sure. It's the other one that she could keep on pushing for. Okay, she's not going for it though. She may look to flank us then. I wanna stay grouped with my team. Okay, I'm gonna fully try hard this actually. I'm literally, the gloves are off, literally. I just took off my wrist sleeve. Can mess with my aim sometimes. Okay, Tristana's there. Ryan got her. I think she's probably over pushing here, but there is a Zac here. Unfortunately, juke that. Got him. Oh, what about Tristana? I have no vision here. Okay, nice. I didn't get Braum though, fuck. Oh, hello. Ugh. All I can do is throw a key. I can't get him range for a trap there. Nah, I need to go away. Wait, that was meant to go on Tristana. I need the flash. I probably should have just cleansed, because the main issue for me there was the red buff slow, but I wasn't thinking that far ahead. me. Oh, I'm too slowed. Damn it! I just need one more auto, but I got one shot by, I guess, TF? Yeah, he's got a full burst build. Damn it, oh well. So, somebody got a shot down with Tristana? Ooh, only Lux, though. That is something, and it was a pretty decently sized shutdown as well. Yeah, I think I definitely want to do a Whisper here. At least Lord Dominic's anyway. Nice one. Uh, could do with our jungler being topside. Hopefully they win that fight. We can't do that. We can't. There's no point pinging for help there. That is just not an option for us right now. Most I can do is, I guess, try and help Sidrani here. If she's actually going to get chased down by half HP Garen. She should have made it. This might work, though. Wait, I just lost sight of... Ugh, Brahman, I just wasted my Energizer proc. I'm guessing Tristana already used her. I need to focus Tristana. I need vision. Please don't have heal. Nice. Okay. Where the fuck did Garen go? I think he flashed, right? Otherwise, I'm sure we would have seen him. <clears throat> I think I misplaced that trap. Okay, it's fine. Good, that is huge. We will actually get- I don't know why the enemies didn't take this Drake, because I was giving this up, right? I was giving up on the Drake, I was rotating towards the fight, so I was hoping we could cheese some kills in exchange for the Drake. We get the kills, we don't even lose the Drake. How does that make sense? We gave it up and the enemies just chose not to take it. She is probably dead. Uh, could we maybe do Baron? No. Our jungler's in base. We can't really start it. There's three. Definitely wouldn't do it fast enough. Don't have anybody to tank either, so losing that HP might really fuck us later on. Um, Gwen is alive though. What the hell? She actually escaped. Nice one. We'll get a start for that too, don't we? Careful, careful. Let's not over push. I'm sitting on a lot of gold here. I don't want to base yet. I want my Lord Dominic's, but... He's definitely dead. We just need to try and avoid the rest of us dying as well. It's a disaster if we do. And this is away from his, like, flash key range. That's all I need to respect there. I should have killed for stat. My bad. Ah. Yeah, no, my bad. What's the point of having Gilfors if I'm not going to block that? Dodge that, rather. Oh god, what an absolute disaster, man. We just needed to not overstay here. Let's see. So we finished the wave. 
Jace just wastes his E looking for poke. Gets engaged on his no escape. This man. Could already tell you before that turret went down, the only move there is to run. Let alone look for poke, let alone waste our escape trying to get meaningless poke. I want to wait 20 gold here. What is he doing? Did he TP there? What? Are they low? Is he going to kill someone there? Yeah. Good work. Fuck, but I really want to um, get my Lord Dominic's man. Oh, well, that was a waste. Okay, at least they're not going to get the inhib. It's a shame I didn't get anything, though. Okay, nice. Maybe we can get Baron now is the great thing. Nice. And I got the kill. Despite Lux's best efforts. Want to go to Baron? Want to also be grouped as much as possible. Tristana could try and kill someone here. If she happens to be somewhere, you know, where she can cheese. Nice. Throw after throw after throw. Hopefully we're getting the lost loft here. I don't know where Tristana is. She should have shown somewhere on the map by now. Gwen needs to be careful, though. Okay, well, <laughs> whatever we're going to build next, probably going to build out of a red cloak. Uh, I could probably do Phantom Dancer. I could do with some DPS here, honestly. Also want the cheap power spike. Uh, Fire Cannon is... Well, even if it was like 2,800 gold, like uh, like Phantom Dancer, which it isn't, it's actually 200 gold more expensive. It also gives a whole lot less attack speed, which is going to be pretty important for me here when they have basically three tanks. I'll go for the Raptors here as well, because Jace is going to get the mid farm. Sorry, Sidrani, but I need to make do best I can. Well, I'll say this much. I was expecting to have lost long ago already. This game has already exceeded my expectations. Even if we don't end up carrying and winning. It's still been fun. Doesn't look like they're trying to cheese. No, they're just going for Gwen. We need to be pushing, guys. We need to pressure. Don't know why they're all going top lane. <clears throat> Yeah, there's nothing I can do by myself. Yeah, that's where we should have been, Lux. Don't even care too much about this blue, I literally just want farm. Trying to accelerate my income as much as I can here. It's much better to ult TF right now, by the way, compared to ulting Tristana, because she's got Bloodthirster. She's going to lifesteal that very effectively. It's pretty much going to do nothing towards her at the moment, whereas TF may be less valuable to, like, do damage to, or, you know, have damaged, but at the very least, the damage is going to stick a lot harder onto him than it will her. I don't think we can contest the Drake, but we still have Baron, which we should take advantage of. Jace is pushing, we also want to be pushing here. If they want to get that Drake, they should be really scared of the prospect of losing their base. Problem is, we don't have vision. They could be collapsing on us. Hopefully they aren't. I'm assuming at least some of them will be staying on the Drake. I don't think they had vision of us going to this either. Uh, luck Tristana can probably win me too, to be honest. If she tries to. It's better if she combos me though. Does she have... She doesn't have no worries. Okay. Dude. Okay, hopefully he gets that. I I know some of us have to die here, but I obviously would like as little of us to die as possible. Let's see if I can get this recall off before Baron wears off. Okay, nice. If TF ulted me, I had cleanse to not get 1v1 by him, but it would probably keep me around long enough for somebody else to kill me. Nice one, guys. Why is Braum alone there, by the way? That doesn't make any sense. He was playing so smart before. <laughs> I'm looking at the map and I just don't see any reason why he should have been there. No reason at all. Nobody's even low for- well, actually, did Jace die? No, 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 Jace died here. It just doesn't make sense why he was there. They cannot run from the long arm of the law, nor from the scope of my rifle.
Don't really have anything to base for. So I could ult TF here, but I'm not even bothered because the thing is, he's probably, he's half HP, he's gonna look the base soon anyway. There's no way he's gonna like try and fight on this HP, right? So unless there's gonna be a fight very, very soon, and I can ult TF to get him low before the fight, then I'm not gonna bother ulting him because he's just gonna base anyway. Unless my ult is gonna kill him, then I would. But here, I just don't feel like there's any point. If anything, I want him to stay on half HP. If I ult them, then it forces him to base, which is a smart thing for him to do anyway. I don't want to bait him into doing a good move. Hmm. Yeah, actually, we should be trying to punish Rustana. They got the right idea. I'll just stay on shove one more wave. Might need to help out Gwen soon. Is he actually still around on half HP? That's so crazy, man. Nice one. This Gwen, so absurdly strong. Still not worth ulting him. Again, I don't want to base him in, uh, bait him into making a good decision by basing. Tristana, though. She can't lifesteal when she's this low, at least. I hope not. Hopefully it's not a waste. As so long as she doesn't get back to full, then it's not a waste. Nice one, guys. The fact that it looks like we're about to win, man. No way. Yep. I need to flush. Oh, and we just ended. Oh my god, the fact that we won this, man. Props to Gwen, I didn't have faith in her. This is not me, like, pulling off a super sick 1v9. That was Gwen actually just... Me underestimating her, she actually was strong enough to carry for enough. GG. Alright gamers, we are back for another game of Caitlyn to Diamond. This game I'm going to be playing Caitlyn Karma into server Seraphine. Facing a small counter in the form of Sivir. It's not that she beats us in lane, it's more that uh, sh her spell shield is so good against our kit that we don't have as good offensive capabilities against her as we should. So even though we should be expecting to win lane, it's also hard to, like, beat her hard enough to compensate for how well she scales. And then some matchups, depending on the support matchup, she can also just beat you in lane, when otherwise, if not for the spell shield interaction on your abilities, she would actually be expected to lose. Doesn't have spell shield yet, though. I think it was, I can always just hide back in the brush if I'm taking too much aggro there. They actually choose to fight back, which they should have done in my opinion. Alright, we don't have a support with hard CC, or at least not easily used hard CC, so I'm not going to bother with the traps. Full level E instead for the trading. Why kill that karma? Just casually said, nah, this one's mine. <laughs> Ow. I have a headshot on the fleet here. I'd like to hit a champion if I can. Come on, he's still missing. I'm gonna go place a ward. Potentia's up already, so it's a pretty solid start. The level 1 was very bad. We do, to be fair, have a pretty solid matchup here with the Karma also being very strong in the early game. Just because Severa is pretty good against me doesn't necessarily mean she's expected to easily survive this one. Got them. The, wait, I just noticed this random melee is actually hitting me for no reason. That's awkward. I want to stand to the side so I'm not getting hit by Sivir's W. One or two hits may not seem bad, but they really add up. And if you just have that attitude throughout the entire lane phase, it's really going to add up in total. Every time Sivir activates W, you want to try and avoid getting hit unless the damage you can deal in return is worth it. Do I need the ghost here? I think I probably should have. I'm just going to have to flash away now. Yeah, should have uh, should have ghosted. Oh well. On the bright side, she didn't get a kill. Hopefully she misses it on farm. She's not going to miss out on too much, to be fair, with the wave in that state, unfortunately. I always aim to win. 
Okay. Hopefully I don't miss out on too much farm either. It's looking like they're failing pretty hard to actually shove this. Hopes the server's out of mana, so... Yeah. Doesn't really have the mana to shove like she would like to. Seraphine does have the mana, but probably likes the brain. It's like I said, guys. Folly radius Q. The ADC is hitting the wave. You hit the wave. You can use your abilities in the wave. Nice, good cancel. Sivir should not have bothered canceling a base there. Seraphine was like mildly annoyed by Karma there because she wanted to finish the base and Karma interrupted her. But there was no threat to Seraphine there, which means Sivir did not need to cancel her base to try and help her. Oop. They do end up getting a kill on Karma though. Oh my god, there we go. Terribly aimed. Okay, we just randomly pick up a double. Who's their jungler? Shavana. Doesn't have amazing ganks. I might be able to escape a gank with just Ghost if she shows up. Ghost and E. Uh, we see Nefiri on mid lane. I'm not expecting to be ganked here. Definitely not by someone who can kill me. I hope. I hope. Should also be able to get this plating. This is more risky. I would certainly be more likely to die to a Shavana gank there. But looks like she is not in fact ganking. So we're all good. Yeah, huge mistake from Sivir. Once she cancelled her base just by panicking because uh, Seraphine had her base cancelled, Sivir was stuck in a spot where she was absolutely going to miss a ton of farm no matter when she based, but if she stayed, she was also going to be laning at a huge disadvantage in HP and mana. So, she shouldn't have died, for sure. She just greeted, trying to punish Karma. It would look like she was overextended, but not so much, you know, if they're going to lose the fight. That was good of Karma to do. Bad of Sivir to follow up. I'm gonna place my pink. And then we can just focus on slow pushing. Yeah, with Kirchi, Shard, and Berserkers, I have a lot of pressure with just auto attacks, which is good because, you know, we want to avoid relying on abilities as much as possible. Well, this could be quite good, though. Got the special with that. We potentially are getting ganked. Okay, that ult was just in case she happened to flash away, and I wanted to make sure I cast it before she went out of vision. I guess she doesn't have flash because twice now she's not used it while being chased down, so... I don't know, first time maybe she- it was possible she maybe thought she could just beat me. That time just makes it seem like she actually just didn't have flash. Should be back up again fairly soon then, though. Oh. I'm in some big trouble here. Hopefully I can at least drag them away from Karma. Okay, only one kill. Big shutdown to Nefiri, unfortunately. Uh, I think they were even warning about this, but... Warning us about that, but, you know. I'm a bit distracted talking to you guys, so... I hope you can forgive me for not having full awareness. <coughs> yeah, that was a very dark map, to be fair. Definitely was, like, shoving the wave, okay, for enough, maybe a necessary risk, you could say, but then moving forwards to get this plating without actually going to ward is stupid. Well, like I said, I was distracted. Ah, took my pink as well. These bastards. I should place a ward though. Uh, should have done it. Now I can't do it without missing out on a melee though, I think. Well, that's what I would have expected. Surfing is currently mid. Don't want to over chase her there because I would miss out on a cannon, which wouldn't be worth it. <laughs> but two autos is fine, and using a ward for it is fine. Ow, that was pretty nicely aimed. Good prediction. Time to follow up. Oh, hello! She's dead. Okay, nice one, holy fuck. Nice trap from them. Can I ult someone here? Surfing? Server might block it. 
with a spell shield. No, it's all good. Try and get Sivir here too. That's fine. Nice one, guys. Certainly explains why Shivana just seemed unfazed at me going to Emsira Scepter at the Honey Fruit. I was like, how badly does she want this Honey Fruit? Not that badly, actually. Alright, what do we want here? Storm Wizard would be decent. Is it worth doing over Static Shift here, in my eyes? Probably yes, to be honest. It's not the, the game where I would need it the most, but the Shivana is going AD, so she's going to want to stick onto me, so I'm going to want to not let her stick onto me. I'm going to want to be fast, so she can't do that. And the Fury, you know, just a regular assassin, movement speed is kind of nice, but at the same time, if she's going to burst me, it doesn't matter how much movement speed I have, so can sometimes be useful in the right situation, other times it won't matter. Um... It's good for chasing down server, and I'm pretty, as I've said, I'm pretty much entirely reliant on autos here, so long as she has spell shield up. So being able to chase her down on more autos, fairly useful, I would say. Decent, I guess, for dodging surfing abilities. Decent for cutting the jacks. So it's not, like, as core as, like, wanting to escape the Nocturne Tether, for example, but I'll say it's fairly decent, this game. She's still a special, as far as I know. Nice one, Karma. So, I said, like, I've, I'm just straight up not using abilities, because she just won't fucking use her spell shield. I've never seen her use it. I'm, I don't think I've cast my ultimate a single time, except the one ult on Seraphine. I've definitely never used it on Sivir, which is my most preferred target. I just haven't seen a window to actually use it. I think she just refuses to use it on anything except my Q or my ult. I think she would be enjoying this lane much more if she actually had an engaged support this is the main issue for her here. She maybe will be able to avoid a lot of my damage and just make everything except my autos useless, but at the same time... Oh, she's going for Karma. Karma, do something. Hit her with something, please. Okay, nice. Special goes down right as she dies, so I can't fucking kill her with that. With anything. Again, ult in case she flashes out of vision. Doesn't cost me, much, cost me much to use it that way. Nice. In a way, I've just put Sivir out of her misery because I'm no longer going to be able to bully her under turret anymore. But yeah, Sivir's naturally low auto attack range is just very, very tough at dealing with uh, Caitlyn's naturally extremely high auto attack range. So that's one thing I got going for me. And her having Seraphine is just not really conductive to doing anything about that. She'd rather have some engage to close the gap, I would say. Instead, Seraphine can barely fight back because I just dodge all of, his, all of Seraphine's skill shots. I need to return to Vault in here before anything else. Probably. Oh. I'm not sure how much I can do to help there. Nice, I headshot Sivir. Yeah, you can hit your Q, I don't care. I still did more damage, so I get the last loss. Uh, can't really move forwards here. Might be able to kill Nefiri if I can ult her. If I could just get vision over. Oh. Shavana doesn't have a ult. That's one kill. Oh, hello. Fucking on a fury. Give me a heart attack there. <laughs> okay, that's a little bit lucky, I guess, that Nefiri couldn't just straight up kill me. I was hoping that at some point she would enter vision and I could finish her off to ult her, but I had no idea where she was. I was not expecting her to re-enter the fight.
Alright, nicely done, team. That's a bit of a disaster for the enemies. Okay, then third item, I guess. Do we want to do vamps up there, since we're so ahead? Nah. I think this is one of those situations I actually just want to continue with my zeal. It would be a little bit nice to have Vamp Scepter against the Nefiri. But on the other hand, I could still do with some DPS for the Shivana and the Jax. The comp isn't that squishy after all, so I still want to prioritize mostly damage. Maybe should have gone bot. I'm go bot now at least. Don't want to hand over a free turret if I can avoid it. By the way, how do they not have objective bounties? I feel like they really should have bounties. No matter the situation, a good investigator always remains calm. Oh nice. I one shot the whole wave. Don't believe there's anybody around that could get me in trouble here. It's my business to know what others do not. So that's where Sivir is. To be honest, maybe should, throughout the game, maybe I should have just been using ult on Seraphine more, especially when her shield was down. But then again, it could have still get blocked by Sivir. I feel like I've barely used abilities this game, but... Maybe I haven't really had that many chances. The problem with the traps is that I don't just want to give Sivir a free heal, for example. But then again, if she does step on a trap, that means her spell shield is down, and then I can poke her with Q or ult, for example. Wow, that is a lot of damage. I guess partially it's just on the fact that Sivir just really doesn't want to use spell shield. It's hard to bait out her ability, her spell shield, when she just refuses to use it on pretty much anything, as far as I can tell. That's why I'm finding myself with no windows to use abilities on her. That's a kill. <laughs> I got my, my headshot. Perfect time. Oh, Wukong. Ah, I tried. Thank you, Karma, for taking that cannon. Maybe this kills her, she doesn't have W. Oh, she didn't, nice. <laughs> Getting ganked by Nefiri. Couldn't hit my E on her there, but... I think we have the burst killer anyway. Shivana no ult. Fuck, I got the other turret shot on me. <laughs> it wasn't worth it, but... Was life without a little risk, I like to say. Definitely could have played that well enough that I wouldn't die there. If I was just a better player. So it wasn't stupid, just misplayed. Misexecuted. And yeah, I'll give Vamps up to next. I don't need Lord Dominic's, for example. But yeah, and a Fear Burst is nothing like LeBlanc's Burst, I guess. I don't, I don't have to be afraid of her as much. Oh boy. Oh no. Nice one, Shivana. Wow, they actually have three Drakes. How is that possible when the enemy button was this behind all game? Oof, I almost failed that. Got her. Nice one. Let's try and end here. Or at least do some... ...damage they won't be able to recover from in their base. Oh, 
Okay. I think that's good enough. Wukong? Wukong? I wasn't even a crit. Oh, fuck me. Right. I was expecting to die there anyway. May as well take Silver down with me. Oh wow, this is pretty good for a 3v5 by the way, and speaking of 3v5, why was it 3v5? Xerath is TP, Camilla's TP and was right here the whole time. <laughs> Could've aced him and ended, but whatever. I respect their choice. I can already finish Shield Bow, to be honest, it should be the right choice. I can already finish it. No chance of getting 300 gold. Hmm, should I wait 40 gold? Oh, nice. Now I don't even have to. Nice. Get to keep my Doran's Blade and get Shobo. I think we should just rush this Baron. We're gonna be too busy defending from our split pushing support. Who defend this Baron? I had my hand off the mouse when I saw that thing. <laughs> Using my E was my only shot. Alright, let's push top. Doesn't matter that their soul is up in like a minute. We should be able to end the game before they even have a chance of getting that. I'm not here to serve. I'm here to protect. Come on, team. Group. Oh boy. Enemy rampage. So to start with like I just don't know what Karma was thinking there. Like fair, like, fair enough if you're, like, trying to distract them so we can get Baron, but then we get Baron and then what are you sticking around for, buddy? Wait, what? Wait, I pressed D there. What the hell? Good thing that didn't kill me. I just did nothing. Until I did actually cost it. Nice. Got him. Alright. GG. Alright gamers, we are back for another game of Killing the Diamond. This game I'm going to be playing Caitlyn Nami into Twitch Lulu. This will probably be a guild for us game. We're facing pretty much three assassins in these three. Maybe Assassin is, is not exactly their class in some cases, but they're going to play out pretty much the same way with just wanting to turn a little kill us, you know. Uh, I'm assuming Twitch is AFK, otherwise Lulu would not be doing this. Okay, that's good news for us, I guess. Might just be a remake, let's hope it isn't. I hate wasting time on a remake. But in the meantime, we just want to slow push. Or even freeze. Yeah, so Lulu still should not have been pushing like that because she just... Not only did she deny those three minions, which okay, fair enough, which is gonna miss anyway. She missed all the minions that died afterwards because she pushed those first three faster. 
means the next three after that die faster. Which means Twitch gets screwed. So his support can benefit. Which is not a good trade. There's a reason the support supports the ADC and the ADC doesn't support the support. Anyway, this should be a fairly good matchup regardless of the AFK. Oof. Ah, I shouldn't have wasted my headshot on the minion, my bad. They get a really bad trade here, to be honest, Twitch is Z. I'm gonna back off. He might, uh, not have V. Might be on cooldown. Might just not have leveled it, but I don't know, so I'm just gonna back off and play it safe. Yeah, we want to try and beat Twitch hard in the early game, just so... Like, later on, he's going to be quite a throw when he hits level 6 and just has a lot of kill potential with Lulu by just chasing us down. I have some disengage from that just by using E, but if he ever chooses to flash it, then it would be hard to escape. But if we get a massive lead, then he just can never actually beat us when he engages on us, and engaging on us is the only option he has since he doesn't win short trades. Since he gets our range too hard, or at least that's the idea. I'm missing way too many lost hits, by the way. Ah, fuck, I missed the cannon. I was distracted with Lulu. Okay, we got a really big push here. Let's try and make the most of this. Place a drop there. Start to do a lot of damage to the turret. Let's drop here too. It's going to be particularly vulnerable when he has to try and hit these costers. If he steps forwards here, I want to place a trap right here. Like that. Part of that will get shielded, but he takes still a lot of damage from it. Oh, I had a headshot there. I should have targeted Twitch with that. Even if it cost me the last set. Okay, we're getting ganked. We want to back off here. Am I going to get charmed or is Nami or nobody? I'm going to pop ghost. We should be able to chase down, I hope. Oh, he's also ghosting. Oh, I got some auto. If I didn't cancel my auto, man. Oh, what a disaster. Oh, well. My bad. Uh, I'll probably just get... Lost hits here. I want to freeze this, and then I want to base. The only gold that I wanted was just enough gold for Berserkers. That's enough to have a really good base. Nami, start basing, please. Because <laughs> you're going to stay here and start pushing. I swear to God, I know it. There we go. Huge. So make it a lot easier to space twitch. Can you leave? A big problem here as well is even if she doesn't just ruin this way for me by starting to push, which looks like she isn't, props to her. When I get into lane here and Lulu is full HP and Twitch is full HP, I don't want my support to be full HP and no mana because she was greeting for XP or anything. Or even just... This is slightly helpful for me, right? That's slightly freezing it, so I miss a little bit less. I would much rather have a support who is full HP and full mana. On the bright side, I am going to be farming a pretty massive wave under turret here, so if she bases now, I can't really be punished under turret because Twitch Lulu can't pressure me under turret, and they can't dive me either. But she needs to get her base off, man. She keeps baiting me by just starting to base and then not basing. I just want her to base. Oh, that's so frustrating. See, now it is much riskier, because now we have a slow push heading towards them. If they don't touch this wave at all, the natural outcome here is I am put at risk. And now is when she bases. Now is when she leaves me with me too. Not when the wave is frozen. Not when the wave is under turret. Not when I'm not under threat. She bases when they have a chance to actually pressure me. That is stupid. She should have based ages ago. What is it that she was taking around for here? A potion? A pink ward? Was the fairy charm? I don't think it was anything in particular. I think she was just greeting for more XP. Thankfully, I'm not punished here. Thankfully. 
She did at least, like, not delay too hard at the very least. Like, even if they were trying to punish me here and Lola hadn't just been, like, roaming the river, it's kind of hard to punish me when the, like, the most I'm overextended is, like, here, right next to my turret. God. The stress of the possibilities if she didn't recall sooner, man. Plus, I could have had a ton of solo XP there that she didn't let me get. Oh, well. The Luna shield, right? Nice. Then that's my window to ult. This is exactly what we want. We don't have a bunch of kills here. But this Twitch is actually colossally behind in the farm. This is exactly how we shut them down hard enough that by level 6, he's just too far behind to ever win the lane again. Hopefully. Uh, you can't step on that, buddy. <sighs> he's dead. Yeah. I get it. It's an impressive lane. He really struggles in this matchup before level 6. At the minimum. And after some items as well. Even if he was randomly to hit level 6, if he only had a Doran's Blade, that would still not be good. He needs enough items to have kill potential on me. So the longer I can delay that, the longer, the more chance I have to just snowball too hard for him to ever have kill potential. But this is pretty much how the matchup should go, in theory. The only thing that can really save Twitch Lulu in this matchup is if they play dramatically better than the Caitlyn Nami, or if the jungler bails them out of the situation by ganking, and then ganking, and then ganking, and then ganking, and even if I'd never die, it still relieves so much of the pressure. It gives Twitch some breathing room to actually get some farm. Do I want to do Stormers of this game? I think I can probably do Static Shiv and just uh, rely on... Guild Force to get me out of sticky situations here. I'll probably want Guild Force for the Maw fight. Guild Force kind of is not even that good into Maw fight to be honest. Especially if he's doing anything other than max range ultimates, because his ult travels so fast, you barely have time to react to it anyway. And you can easily get clipped out of the Guild Force dash animation and just have it cancelled, even if you reacted in time. But it's better than nothing. And it'll help me against the uh, Twitch engages, which he might become strong enough later. I shall become a threat, especially if he's near his allies. And that would definitely help me a lot against the Evelyn. Whereas Moon of Speed was not going to do anything against Maw Fight. It's going to do very little against Lulu. Actually, oh, that's going to be... Is that going to be a tank Maw Fight? It must be. Okay, Lulu is mid, which is roaming mid. We want to start pushing. Nami should start roaming. She should see what she can do on mid lane, if anything. What I want to do, though, is just keep pushing this turret. Because, I mean, I could roam. Maybe if I was a stronger skirmishing ADC, I might consider it. Maybe if I was somebody like a Fellows without white, who pushes turrets very slowly... And I would also consider roaming to see if I can fight, you know, depending on... I mean, everybody's low here, right? That is something that I could potentially influence. But also, now I get a lot of guaranteed gold here by just staying. So if my team just refuses to lose a fight, and if they are going to lose it, then they just don't fight, then we gain a lot from the enemies just letting me push here. So far, so good. I don't know if Twitch even... Yeah, I mean, Twitch Lulu. Or Twitch at least got no assist, so you got nothing from that. I can afford to deny a little bit of farm here. This turret pin which dies whenever I want it to, just one headshot will kill this wave, so I can focus on denying farm in the meantime. I'm looking at the map, I see none of my threats are at risk of dying. Only chance would be if, like, Evelyn had a Herald, and she was around to place it on mid lane, but she doesn't have a Herald. So I can keep on denying farm here. It's probably gonna die to the minions here, won't be able to deny too much. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm not gonna overextend to shove another wave, which is base. Uh, maybe I'll... should hopefully be able to help Shavana here. I'm going to position at the back of the pit, probably. I'll play some war uh, traps here first. Block them off here. I, need le I at least need to be in a position in the pit where if this turns into trouble, where if we get massively outnumbered, I'm confident it's not going to happen now, so I'll not bother doing that. But in case we do get outnumbered, I need to be in a position where I can just jump through the wall and escape. But I maybe kill or got... No, they're going to be blocking, so I won't bother. Okay, I can get a dagger, so we're going for Gull Force. Nice. And do we want to go mid lane? I would say yes. Zed, if I swap here, hopefully Malphite... I mean, the thing is, Malphite could actually be a really big threat to us, 1v2, if he gets ganks from Evelyn and turns it into 2v2, because he has such good engage. 
So easy to catch it us. Uh, so easy to catch us out, especially because Nami is easily one shotable as well. I don't have a strong tanky support to lock them down and save me. Okay, is Evelyn here? She is indeed. And it just forces my flash, but that she fucked it up. She played that so badly. Now, can I get Malphite here? Can I get the Q on the ult? Yes, nice, perfect. So that went better than I realistically should have hoped for it to go. Because it really was such a big risk to rotate here. I wasn't actually expecting Zed to even base here, though. I wasn't even thinking... Like, I hadn't decided yet whether I actually wanted to rotate here permanently and swap lanes with Zed, or if I just wanted to, like, walk over here, pressure, and then go rotate back to bot lane when to shove that in. Twitch isn't shoving it in, though, so the thing is... Because Twitch is choosing to freeze instead, I think that's a very bad move in solo queue. It straight up doesn't work. Because what it, mean, what it means is that nobody is forced to rotate bot for farm, which means we stay here 3v2 at worst. Sure, one of us is... Just, we're having to share farm. It's not ideal in terms of sharing farm, but the pressure is just... You know, it's relentless. They're eventually going to crack. They're going to, like, try and defend it. Somebody might die. They might try and force a fight. They're going to lose the fight because they're permanently outnumbered. And we're just going to be constantly getting... Platings, doing turret damage, having numbers of advantage for objectives. So I don't think freezing here is really an option. So Zed wasn't actually forced to leave the lane. He chose to do it anyway. That was a mistake from him. If he got the did he cold push though? Nice. Okay, it works. But if we died there 2v2, that wouldn't have been necessary. Because Zed didn't have to leave. It could have been it could have stayed 3v2. Uh do I want to go bot? If I want to go bot, I have to do it now, not bef not after my recall, because somebody can shove that in. In fact, this way probably shoves itself in. It's got a numbers advantage, so I may want to go bot lane directly. At least clear out these minions. Ideally, I would like to shove in another wave after that as well. I don't know if I'll get the chance to. Oh, he actually has that back up. Come oh, on, I think I'm dead. Oh, I don't know if that was a crit or what, but thank god. I also know Evelyn isn't around, so... Actually, I am not safe to do this. Did get some minions, at least. Oh, I meant to queue him there. Okay. I'll leave him with a parting gift before I recall. In theory, I could stay here, but... I really don't want to risk it. I got a big shutdown and a lot of gold spent. Gonna have to return straight to bot lane. <laughs> okay, I thought he was doing that to show faster. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, that is all the time I believe that we had for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Alright gamers, we are back for another game of Killing the Diamond. This game I'm going to be playing Caitlyn Nami into Twitch Lulu. This will probably be a guild for us game. We're facing pretty much three assassins in these three. Maybe assassin is, is not exactly their class in some cases, but they're going to play out pretty much the same way with just wanting to turn a little kill us, you know. Uh, I'm assuming Twitch is AFK, otherwise Lulu would not be doing this. Okay, that's good news for us, I guess. Might just be a remake. Let's hope it isn't. I hate wasting time on a remake. But in the meantime, we just want to slow push. Or even freeze. Yeah, so Lolo still should not have been pushing like that because she just... Not only did she deny those three minions, which okay, fair enough, which is going to miss anyway. She missed all the minions that died afterwards because she pushed those first three faster. Means the next three after that die faster. Which means Twitch gets screwed. So his support can benefit. Which is not a good trade. There's a reason the support supports the ADC and the ADC doesn't support the support. Anyway, this should be a fairly good matchup regardless of the AFK. Oof. Ah, I shouldn't have wasted my headshot on the minion, my bad. I think it's a really bad trade here to be honest, Twitch is the... I'm gonna back off, he might uh... Not have the... Might be on cooldown. I just not have leveled it, but I don't know, so I'm just going to back off and play it safe. Laws mean nothing when they've
scale to protect the public. Yeah, we want to try and beat Twitch hard in the early game, just so... Like, later on, he's going to be quite a throw when he hits level 6 and just has a lot of kill potential with Lulu by just chasing us down. I have some disengage from that just by using E, but if he ever chooses to flash it, then it would be hard to escape. But if we get a massive lead, then he just can never actually beat us when he engages on us, and engaging on us is the only option he has since he doesn't win short trades. Since he gets our range too hard, or at least that's the idea. I'm missing way too many lost hits, by the way. Ah, fuck, I missed the cannon. I was distracted with Lulu. Okay, we got a really big push here. Let's try and make the most of this. Place a drop there. Start to do a lot of damage to the turret. Let's drop here too. It's going to be particularly vulnerable when he has to try and hit these costers. If he steps forwards here, I want to place a trap right here. Like that. Part of that will get shielded, but he takes still a lot of damage from it. Oh, I had a headshot there. I should have targeted Twitch with that. Even if it cost me the last set. Okay, we're getting ganked. We want to back off here. Am I going to get charmed or is Nami or nobody? I'm going to pop ghost. We should be able to chase down, I hope. Oh, he's also ghosting. Oh, I got some auto. If I didn't cancel my auto, man. Oh, what a disaster. Oh, well. My bad. Uh, I'll probably just get... Lost hits here. I want to freeze this, and then I want to base. The only gold that I wanted was just enough gold for Berserkers. That's enough to have a really good base. Nami, start basing, please. Because <laughs> you're going to stay here and start pushing. I swear to God, I know it. There we go. Huge. So make it a lot easier to space twitch. Can you leave? A big problem here as well is even if she doesn't just ruin this way for me by starting to push, which looks like she isn't, props to her. When I get into lane here and Lulu is full HP and Twitch is full HP, I don't want my support to be full HP and no mana because she was greeting for XP or anything. Or even just... This is slightly helpful for me, right? That's slightly freezing it, so I miss a little bit less. I would much rather have a support who is full HP and full mana. On the bright side, I am going to be farming a pretty massive wave under turret here, so if she bases now, I can't really be punished under turret because Twitch Lulu can't pressure me under turret, and they can't dive me either. But she needs to get her base off, man. She keeps baiting me by just starting to base and then not basing. I just want her to base. Oh, that's so frustrating. See, now it is much riskier, because now we have a slow push heading towards them. If they don't touch this wave at all, the natural outcome here is I am put at risk. And now is when she bases. Now is when she leaves me with me too. Not when the wave is frozen. Not when the wave is under turret. Not when I'm not under threat. She bases when they have a chance to actually pressure me. That is stupid. She should have based ages ago. What is it that she was taking around for here? A potion? A pink ward? Was the fairy charm? I don't think it was anything in particular. I think she was just greeting for more XP. Thankfully, I'm not punished here. Thankfully. She did at least, like, not delay too hard. At the very least, like, even if they were trying to punish me here and Lilith hadn't just been, like, roaming the river, it's kind of hard to punish me when the, like, the most I'm overextended is, like, here, right next to my turret. God. The stress of the possibilities if she didn't recall sooner, man. Plus, I could have had a ton of solo XP there that she didn't let me get. Oh, well. The Luna shield, right? Nice. Then that's my window to ult. This is exactly what we want. We don't have a bunch of kills here, but this Twitch is actually colossally behind in farm. This is exactly how we shut them down hard enough that by level 6, he's just too far behind to ever win the lane again. Hopefully. Uh, you can't step on that, buddy. He's dead. 
I get it. It's an impressive lane. He really struggles in this matchup before level 6. At the minimum. And after some items as well. Even if he was randomly to hit level 6, if he only had a Doran's Blade, that would still not be good. He needs enough items to have kill potential on me. So the longer I can delay that, the longer, the more chance I have to just snowball too hard for him to ever have kill potential. But this is pretty much how the matchup should go, in theory. The only thing that can really save Twitch Lulu in this matchup is if they play dramatically better than the Caitlyn Nami. Or if the jungler bails them out of the situation by ganking, and then ganking, and then ganking, and then ganking. And even if I'd never die, it still relieves so much of the pressure. It gives Twitch some breathing room to actually get some farm. Do I want to do Stormers of this game? I think I can probably do Static Shiv and just uh, rely on... Guild Force to get me out of sticky situations here. I'll probably want Guild Force for the Maw fight. Guild Force kind of is not even that good into Maw fight to be honest. Especially if he's doing anything other than max range ultimates. Because his ult travels so fast, you barely have time to react to it anyway. And you can easily get clipped out of the Guild Force dash animation. And just have it cancelled, even if you reacted in time. But it's better than nothing. And it'll help me against the uh, Twitch engages, which he might become strong enough later. I shall become a threat, especially if he's near his allies. And that would definitely help me a lot against the Evelyn, whereas Moon of Speed was not going to do anything against Malphite. It's going to do very little against Lulu. Actually, oh, that's going to be... Is that going to be a tank Malphite? It must be. Okay, Lulu is mid, which is roaming mid. We want to start pushing. Nami should start roaming. She should see what she can do on mid lane, if anything. What I want to do, though, is just keep pushing this turret, because... I mean, I could roam. Maybe if I was a stronger skirmishing ADC, I might consider it. Maybe if I was, maybe if I was somebody like a Fellows without white, who pushes turrets very slowly... And I would also consider roaming to see if I can fight, you know, depending on... I mean, everybody's low here, right? That is something that I could potentially influence. But also, now I get a lot of guaranteed gold here by just staying. So if my team just refuses to lose a fight, and if they are going to lose it, then they just don't fight, then we gain a lot from the enemies just letting me push here. So far, so good. I don't know if Twitch even... Yeah, I mean, Twitch Lulu. Or Twitch at least got no assist, so you got nothing from that. I can afford to deny a little bit of farm here. This turret pin which dies whenever I want it to, just one headshot will kill this wave, so I can focus on denying farm in the meantime. I'm looking at the map, I see none of my threats are at risk of dying. Only chance would be if, like, Evelyn had a Herald, and she was around to place it on mid lane, but she doesn't have a Herald. So I can keep on denying farm here. It's probably gonna die to the minions here, won't be able to deny too much. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm not gonna overextend to shove another wave, which is base. Uh, maybe I'll... should hopefully be able to help Shavana here. I'm going to position at the back of the pit, probably. I'll play some war uh, traps here first. Block them off here. I, need le I at least need to be in a position in the pit where if this turns into trouble, where if we get massively outnumbered, I'm confident it's not going to happen now, so I'll not bother doing that. But in case we do get outnumbered, I need to be in a position where I can just jump through the wall and escape. But I maybe kill or got... No, they're going to be blocking, so I won't bother. Okay, I can get a dagger, so we're going for Gull Force. Nice. And do we want to go mid lane? I would say yes. Zed, if I swap here, hopefully Malphite... I mean, the thing is, Malphite could actually be a really big threat to us. 1v2, if he gets ganks from Evelyn and turns it into 2v2. Because he has such good engage. So easy, to catch it us, uh, so easy to catch us out, especially because Nami is easily one-shotable as well. And I have a strong tanky support to... Lock them down and save me. Okay, is Evelyn here? She is indeed. And it just forces my flash, but that she fucked it up. She played that so badly. Now, can I get Malphite here? Can I get the Q on the ult? Yes, nice, perfect. So that went better than I realistically should have hoped for it to go. Because it really was such a big risk to rotate here. I wasn't actually expecting Zed to even base here, though. I wasn't even thinking... Like, I hadn't decided yet whether I actually wanted to rotate here permanently and swap lanes with Zed, or if I just wanted to, like, walk over here, pressure, and then go rotate back to bot lane when Twitch shoved that in. Twitch isn't shoving it in, though, so the thing is, because Twitch is choosing to freeze instead, I think that's a very bad move in solo queue. It straight up doesn't work. 
Because what that mean what it means is that nobody is forced to rotate bot for farm, which means we stay here three v two at worst. Sure, one of us is just, we're having to share farm. It's not ideal in terms of sharing farm, but the pressure is just, you know, it's relentless. They're eventually gonna crack. They're gonna like try and defend it. Somebody might die. They might try and force a fight. They're gonna lose the fight because they're permanently outnumbered, and we're just gonna be constantly getting platings, doing turret damage. Having numbers advantage for objectives, so I don't think freezing here is really an option. So Zed wasn't actually forced to leave the lane, he chose to do it anyway, that was a mistake from him. If he got the did he cold push though? Nice, okay it works. But if we died there 2v2, that wouldn't have been necessary. Because Zed didn't have to leave, it could have been, it could have stayed 3v2. Uh, do I want to go bot? If I want to go bot, I have to do it now, not bef not after my recall, because somebody can shove that in. In fact, this way probably shoves itself in. It's got a numbers advantage, so I may want to go bot lane directly. At least clear out these minions. Ideally, I would like to shove in another wave after that as well. I don't know if I'll get the chance to. Oh, he actually has that back up. Come oh, on, I think I'm dead. Oh, I don't know if that was a crit or what, but thank god. I also know Evelyn isn't around, so... Actually, I am not safe to do this. Did get some minions, at least. Oh, I meant to queue him there. Okay. I'll leave him with a parting gift before I recall. In theory, I could stay here, but... I really don't want to risk it. I got a big shutdown and a lot of gold spent. Gonna have to return straight to bot lane. <laughs> okay, I thought he was doing that to show faster. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, that is all the time I believe that we had for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.